Right, time we good. Are we live? I think we are. Hello all and welcome back to the Football Chat Live. It is three months until the Euros and tonight our preparations begin. England's preparations for Euro 2024 in Germany begin tonight with two international friendlies over the next week. Tonight though, we play Brazil, the Copa America champions, a very strong side who are also preparing for a tournament of their own this summer. So, it's going to be interesting to see how England get on tonight. It's a very strong side as well. Can England take on a strong Brazil team and win? Or will Brazil prove to be too tough a test? Harry, you excited to have England back? Oh, I love it when England are back on the TV, back playing at Wembley. It's going to be a very, very good game. I think it's going to be quite an interesting game, actually. It's a, I like it. It's a strong warm-up game. You see some teams like to play weaker opposition to you know, just get a win under the belt and get some minutes in. But England, we've got... A two tough sides actually coming up, starting with Brazil tonight, ending with Belgium on Tuesday. Two very good games of football they're going to be. Um, and I think they're going to be two very good warm-up games. As you say, a very, very strong England side tonight, a decent uh, Brazil side too. So overall, it should be a decent game of football. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. It should be. I think, as you say, obviously these aren't the warm-up games per se. Those come right before the tournament, those in that week or so before. Tonight, though, we do have the, well, sort of a getting the side back together, yeah. getting some games and getting ready for the tournament. Tonight, we see full strength. I think that makes sense. This is probably as close to what we will line up with in Germany as we can get tonight, given injuries to players like Harry Kane and Bakayo Saka. So I understand why why we're slightly rested. Yeah. But I think overall, this looks our strongest side. And Nick Nack, onto the stream. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you, Nick Nack. Let's have a look then at the lineups for this evening. As I said, a very strong England team. And we are, of course, at Wembley Stadium this evening. And the England team is as follows. It is in between the six, Jordan Pickford. It looks like he'll be Southgate's number one for the tournament in Germany. No shocks there. He loves him. In the back four, Captain Walker for the evening. Stones, Maguire and Ben Chilwell. Despite his struggles at Chelsea, does take up a spot in this team. In the pivot, it's Rice and Gallagher. On the right-hand side, Phil Foden. On the left-hand side, Anthony Gordon. In attacking midfield, it's Jude Bellingham. And he's just behind Ollie Watkins. Anything you want to point out in that side? Any weird things? Any interesting things? I think it's a good side. You know, It's a, probably our strongest with Ollie when you put, factor in injuries and things like that. But... It is definitely one of our stronger sides. It's a pretty, pretty good side, to be honest. I think that that side has a lot of potential to go very yeah. far at the Euros. And when you add, you know, a couple of players into that, like the likes of Kane, we're looking very, very dangerous. Overall, pretty happy. With it. Pretty happy. With it. Yeah, I just want to talk about the midfield makeup because I think that's quite interesting. Does Conor Gallagher's inclusion denote that he will probably start at the Euros, or is that just Salka experiment? I think it's going to be interesting because. Henderson and Phillips aren't going to touch the team, which is. I good don't think to they see. can start. I think that would be a travesty if they start. I don't think they should be there. But, you know, I don't think we could see Kobe Mainu start. I think no. he's been slightly overhyped by Manchester United's PR. I then, I mean, for me, it's mind-boggling that Curtis Jones isn't anywhere near the England squad because he would provide that engine in there. That that little what? Why do you disagree with that? I don't know. I I I'm, I've never been a. I think Curtis Jones is a good player. Do I think he's better than the midfield composition we've got there? No. Um, I think Curtis Jones is probably a better suit for England than Conor Gallagher in a in a double pivot. I think Gallagher, I think Conor Gallagher play Gallagher, deeper role, and it's definitely not suited. Yeah, to. It, but it depends what we're going to do at the Euros. I think Gallagher's a risky one because he loves a foul, and in, in an Aussie, I know tonight will be fine. But looking forward to in, to a major international competition. That's a massive liability if you keep giving free kicks away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but there's options there. I know you know you could look at Ross Barkley yeah. as an option. I think that he's been very good at Luton Town this season. So yeah, more Prowse could even play in there, no. which I'm not a huge fan of. But it, it's I, I, I like it because he's. It, I, I think we have to bring someone like Ward Prowse because having again you have it's a bit of game management, a bit of you know just thinking about it. Having that free kick ability at an international tournament could be huge. Yeah, I think there's some in the under twenty one squad still also who deserve to be getting a look in. Like Angel Gomez. Just because he plays his football out in yeah. France doesn't mean he's a bad footballer. Yeah, hundred percent. By any stretch. And he doesn't seem to get anywhere near this team, despite the fact we lack a true defensive midfielder. And he would provide that. We saw him do that at the at the U twenty one Euros. He was yeah. brilliant in that role as we went and won the tour uh, went and won it. Oh, I don't know why he hasn't been integrated. I don't know why Curtis Jones hasn't been pushed up. They're the kind of players that could come into this squad. And I do think there's a bit of Deadwood in there. Yeah. I don't really see what Jordan Henson adds that you wouldn't have with a Curtis Jones or Andrew Gomez. Come on. 
You got you got to get on board. The no, leadership. That's why we've still got Walker starting for England yeah. at leadership. Calvin Phillips, the, all that standing around he does, super. I was gonna say, he keeps the bench warm for the big players when they come off. Let's have a look at the Brazil team then, because yeah. we have to do we do have to look at both sides. In between the sticks, it's Krepsky. Now, I don't know a lot about Bento Krepsky. I'm guessing, obviously, with Allison out injured, with Edison out injured, yeah. they're sort of forced their hand there. Injured. Definitely not. Well, they are both injured, then, and neither of them feature for their club sides in weeks, and they won't feature for a good couple of weeks. I, but yeah, I forgot Edison got injured. They are, they are both injured. Uh, so Krepsky comes into that role. In the back forward, Danilo is your experience alongside Bruno, Beraldo, and Wendell. It's a very weak defence, I will say. You've got no uh, Bremer in there, who you would expect will play when fit. It's a, yeah, a bit of a weaker side there. Still got uh, Beraldo, though, playing at PSG. In the middle three, Joao Gomez, Bruno Guimaraes, and Lucas Paqueta. The composition's a little bit weird, but it's still, I think that's a fairly solid mm. midfield, actually. On the right-hand side, Rafinha. On the left-hand side, Vinicius. And through the middle, Rodrigo. We did think Endrick might start this evening, but no first taste of European football for the young Brazilian. However, he is he on the bench? He is on the bench. So, would you be... Do you think we might see Endrick tonight? Yeah, it's a friendly. 100%. Joe. Probably should have started, but I'll give him the start. Anyway, I think... It's it's really it's it's not their strongest by far Brazil you know let's give let's give them credit there it's not their best side but that it's still a decent decent team and on that that front three is disgusting uh, I'm sorry that is absolutely outrageous that front yeah. three could cause a lot of problems but I think it's going to be an interesting game they're going to cause us some problems we're going to cause them some problems. I think we're going to be in for a really good game, yeah. a really good match. I will know. I thought Gleison Bremer was injured. He's not. He's just on the bench, which in that case is a very weird decision to play the 28-year-old Bruno who plays for Flamengo. Uh, again, I'm not too familiar with him um, over him, but yeah, fair yeah. enough. I, I know the manager is someone who isn't of the star quality you'd expect for Brazil. I can't I'm going to have to remember. It's Doraval Jr. He is his only managed effort in Brazil. Which is interesting. He's last... Well, he was at Flamengo two years ago, which might suggest why Bruno is in the yeah. team tonight. So, I, I, it's interesting to see. It's uh, interesting how he gets on. He has had 26 managerial jobs, so he's certainly experienced, but this is his biggest job by far. He's never managed outside of his home country. Mm. It's a it's a hell of a risk. Yeah, it's a massive hell of a risk. It's an interesting decision, isn't it? And I, I look at that side tonight, and I don't feel confident in Brazil. I know they're missing a lot, but... At the end of the day, yeah. that side's still pretty poor. It is. I, th I think it is quite a, a weak Brazil team. I, th I think that um, Nick in chat was criticising that midfield three. I actually think that's a very strong midfield three. Arguably, it's got a better composition than England's midfield. I'm going to find Nick Nick uh, saying, uh, kind of weird that Brazil, the, the Brazil midfield is two players from bang average Premier League teams. Um, but yeah, it's Paqueta. Paqueta, not Paqueta. That's I've, that's exactly the same thing, Nick Nack. Paqueta rather than Paqueta. I swear it's I the I, I I'd always the Lucas Paqueta, but the then people I think started saying Paqueta, Paqueta is because of the song. Oh right. Because they change it so it work just sold my car to Lucas oh, Paqueta. That's, right. that's where the confusion lies. It's not going to work because if it's Lucas just sell my car to Lucas Paqueta. Yeah. But I I really like that midfield three. I think you've yeah. got you've got Bruno, and, uh, who's a fantastic defensive midfielder, who's a playmaker. You've got Jao Gomez, who's really good at winning the ball back. And you've got Lucas Paqueta, who's a very yeah. uh, creative footballer. So yeah, I think I quite like that midfield three. It makes a lot more sense yeah. than the England one does, where you've got two attacking midfielders and a box to box midfielder. Yeah. That's not a midfield three. No. So Conor Gallagher, Conor Gallagher's going to have to do a bit of a a different job tonight to what we are used to seeing from him. Yeah. I think it's going to be uh, an interesting one. You know, they're highlighting there the battle between Walker and Vinicius Junior. We're going to see tonight. Yeah, that is going to be a lot of fun. Overall, at the end of the day, it's a friendly. Let's enjoy the game. Let's you know, it's going to be a we're going to be a good one. Yeah. You know, hopefully we can win. If we don't win, not going to throw it, unless we get absolutely tanked. I'm not too worried what the result is tonight. I no, I, I would like to see us beat Brazil because I yeah. think that would show we are at the at the caliber, but. Yeah. Yeah, Nick says it's a midfield four for England. What suggests that, Nick Knack? I, I can't imagine it's a 4 1 2 1 2 with Gordon playing as one of the strikers. Surely not. Because then that makes absolutely no sense. That'd be three attacking midfielders in a midfield four. Yeah. But, yeah, hopefully Bellingham and Foden will provide some width. Why Why is it that, Nick Knack, why, what suggests it's going to be a narrow shape? I think it's never used a narrow shape before. 
No, he got on one wing and thrown on the other. You would imagine that's how it will look, yeah. You'd imagine so. Anyway, prediction time. What are you going for? Yeah, I don't really know what to predict. I think we are the strongest side, but you never know of England, do you? Uh, we're gonna, they could surprise us with anything. Uh, but I'm going to back us to win tonight. I think it'll be a close contest, though. I will go two goals to one. Um, Fair enough. I think we'll open the scoring through Ollie Watkins. Uh, we'll well taken goal. Then Brazil will equalise just before half-time through Vinicius Jr. And then 20 minutes into the second half, I'll go for a winner from Jude Bellingham. Yeah, fair enough. I think both the defences are actually quite weak, especially compared to the attack. So I yeah. will say it'll be quite high scoring. I'll go England 3, Brazil 2. In a bit of a, a barnstormer, really. A, a game that, you know, everyone's a bit excited about. And the fact we yeah. beat Brazil, I think, will we'll also raise expectations heading into the Euros. I will say a Bellingham goal because he is our best player. I will then say a Foden goal. And I will say from the bench, I was going to say Cole Palmer, but we haven't even taken him for some reason. Yeah. Um, why call him up and then not put him in the squad? I will say... Who's our strike on the bench? Tony? Yeah. Weird choice, but I'll say Ivan Tony. And then for Brazil, I'll go Vinicius Jr. and Endrick because I think we need something to get hyped about before we go to Real Madrid. So I think it would be a... Uh, that's what's going to happen. It would be a big goal if Ivan Tony was to score tonight. I think it would be an interesting one. Well, I think that's a weird selection, isn't it? Because yeah. he's not played football all season. You've got Dom Solanke there mm. it was a striker who's scored uh, it's the second top scorer in the premier league and he's benched for some reason i don't understand that one crazy really don't understand crazy. that one especially if we are going to play with two strikes tonight which i don't expect we will but i guess we'll we'll see and then that says i'm going one all fair enough fair enough Nick. that goal scorers but yeah if anyone else is in chat and that is a, if if anyone else is in chat then give hold on the live chat feel free to say hi and give your thoughts heading into kickoff but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we get on this evening. I definitely think we're fielding a stronger side than Brazil are. I, yeah, I think that Brazil yeah. defence is incredibly weak. And while England's defence isn't great, I I think that it's definitely stronger than Brazil's. So, yeah, it says Tony offers something a bit different, I guess. Yeah, I can understand it for tournaments. I just, I, and I know this team is supposed to be as close to what we're going to yeah, see at the tournament as possible. So. But the, after Harry Kane's penalty at the World Cup, I think I'll put Ivan Tony on them. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Nick that says Foden and Vinicius. Oh, the goal scorers. Fair enough. I like it. I like it a lot. So, yeah, it is going to be a 4-2-3-1 for England tonight. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see whether, whether that Gallagher... My biggest question mark is around that Gallagher-Rice pivot. I'm also intrigued to see Foden out on the right flank. Yeah, it's good. I you know, even think it's like, I know Shaw's injured at the moment, but Chilwell. You know, could we get round to the, the summer and Shaw's favoured? Chilwell's got to prove that he does... Why Martin if, Rashford, if Shaw's back, why Martin Rashford is here is beyond me. I, I don't understand a lot of the selections because they're players that have been really poor this season and they've never really done a lot for England. Like, yeah. I can understand if a player's having a bit of a rough patch, like Raheem Sterling, for example, who hasn't been called up today uh, well, for this international mm. break. He's someone who's always performed for England and is going yeah. for a rough patch. I could understand if he was called up because he's been an integral part of the squad for the last few yeah. years and... He does turn up on England's international point. duty. I don't... But today, but in this squad, we've got players like uh, Marcus Rashford who've never really shown anything for him. I can't, I can't remember a moment that I can actually I can go back in memory and think, oh, Marcus Rashford did well there. I think, at the, I want to say at the, either at the World Cup or the Euros before he had a strong group stage. But I, I don't have mem many strong memories of him playing for England other than the final in 21. And that didn't exactly go well for him. So, mm. yeah. I uh, I don't think I, I don't know I don't know yeah, what he's done to merit a place in this squad. Sterling's World Cup wasn't flattering, but it was okay. But the Euros before that was phenomenal. That game against Germany between him and Kane was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I do also think I, mean, I know we're speaking about left backs uh, briefly. I do think Shaw will be back into a starting berth if he's fit in time for the Euros. Yeah, I mean he's at the St George's Park camp. And he this, to him, over he's this been brilliant. He's yeah. scored in the final of the Euros and. 
depending on what we're looking to do with this England yeah. side, if it is to have Shaw bombing forwards in possession, which would make sense because Walker's very comfortable playing yeah. in a situational back three. If you've got Fonat on the left-hand side, he's going to want to drift into the half space. Mm. So I think it, it would make sense to have Shaw overlapping. But Chua can also do that. So I think we've got two left-backs that are suited to that role. Yeah. I do think, however, it makes it very difficult for a Trent Alexander-Arnold mm. or a a Rhys James to get into this team. Yeah, potentially Kieran Trippier. I'm, I don't, did he get called up this time? I don't think he did. No, did he? Joe Gomez was. He's, well injured. he's another one who could play yeah, in that in Joe that Gomez. right back role. He's, he's done all right. For he's, a, and he's, he's versatile, but why is he here? He can play, yeah, he can play anywhere across the back yeah. line, and he, mm -hmm. Southgate just loves having eight right back options. Yeah, disguised as other options. I think that's as left back will come down to fitness levels. Chua can do the job if he's as, uh, if he's fit as can Shaw. Yeah, I I think though Southgate does obviously prefer Shaw. And that's been evident over his his period in charge. But yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see what that comes down to. There's also a minute's applause before today's game, of course, celebrating the life of Terry Venables. Uh, we haven't had an England game no. since uh, his passing. So a moment's applause for him here. Very, very nice to see. Gary says, hello, hello. Good to see you, Gary. Hey. Welcome to the stream. Now the people in chat are rolling in. Good to see you all. Gary can be bothered for the fatty bit at the start. No. Up the game kicks off. They just woken up, to be fair. Yeah. Gary says, interesting lineup today. Yeah, Gary, it's pretty much full strength, but it does open up big questions as to what our midfield will look like at the Euros. Because if Conor Gallagher starting in a midfield two, I am slightly worried. So, yeah, let's see. Uh, Nick Nass says, I'd like to see Tino Livermento make the final cut. I like Tino, but I, I don't see it personally, Nick Nack. I think that strength in depth at right back is just hey, I want ridiculous. Tamori. Yeah. Tamori, Gerhi, Colwell. Any of them. There's, three de there's just three defenders that are better than Maguire. Anyway, he has done well for England, though, so I can understand why he's picked. And he's uh, having a good season. Uh, Brazil have got us underway, by the way. I know Harry has updated the scoreboard so you can all see, but we are underway. And Brazil just knocking it around the back as England press them. Beraldo. Now Bruno, Danilo, Gordon gets a touch on it, but it's not enough. Paqueta, Bruno Guimaraes, now Maguire comes in, but he's not assertive enough. And here come Brazil. Rodrigo sprays one out towards the left-back Wendell. Now it's with Vinicius. Wendell. Vinicius goes back to Bruno. Now Danilo. Touch isn't great, and Gordon does pounce on it well, unable to come away with possession, though. It's also a shame to see Brazil not in their famous yellow kit today. I, I think that it's probably one to you know celebrate both the new kits. Mm. This is the debut for the home and away shirts. And also, two, because apparently now yellow and white are too similar. Yeah. But yeah. And of course, I, uh, Channel 4's cameras focusing on the back of England's collars because that's the only thing anyone oh, cares about in the like UK. The collar, now. Like they changed the flag. Like it's never been Believe done before. So. But yeah. Guys, says Hope Watkins can put on a good performance. Finally got his opportunity. Yeah. 100%. Would be nice to see him perform. I think he is definitely second in command to Kane now. There's a bit oh, of a cool. question mark there as to whether it be Watkins or Tony. I think you can't justify what uh, Tony being second in command when he is. I, I even you know, he hasn't played football in a year. Even for he hasn't played for. I, st I have always thought that Watkins is better than Tony. Yeah, I think I think we've actually got a really nice uh, setup with what with uh, Kane, Tony, Watkins. Yeah, I think they all give you something very different. Uh, Kane's very good at linking up the play. Watkins is very good in behind. Tony's very good in the air and quite a presence up yeah. there. They're all very different Difference strikers is, and a free kick Harry here Kane, for England in a good yeah. area. The difference is Harry Kane can do it in the air but he's, and he's also a deadly finisher. Yeah, yeah he's obviously. More, he's more complete as a forward. Yeah, well, I mean, he's one of the best goal scorers in Premier League history. Oh, yeah. He's also, the, out of the three, he's the best at linking up the play. Yeah, which is what you need and sometimes. Yeah. And a leader, of course. That's right, because whenever we get to a final, we'll score in the first three minutes and try and part the bus at our home stadium. If we don't do that in Germany this summer. Oh, if we could win it on German soil, it'd be absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Hopefully we can hold on this time. Good chances for Foden. Yeah, really good area for this delivery. Phil Foden puts it on the keeper, and I thought that might just end up touch. in the back of the net there. 
England were but just wide. Take your goal, Texas Cape really. I was going to say, give Krapke something to think about. Any, any goalkeeper whose name is very similar to Crap, uh, you've got to call it a day. Well, that shirt, he's got Ben type, I think. You would, wouldn't you? You wouldn't have you wouldn't have crap or whatever, or whatever his name is on the back of your shirt. You're not selling any of those. Mm. I don't think you can sell any. Didn't but... he know Force Long cut out by Rice cut Krepsky. out by? That's his name. Anyway, Rafinha. No, Danilo. That's another big call, Rafinha. Given he's not played. Yeah, he's I... not. Uh, it's not that he's not played for Barcelona a lot this season. It's just when he has played, he's not been great. Might sound like a bit of an idiot, but I've never really rated him. Um... I think that's wrong. I think it's a very good. I, d- I don't know. He did went at Leeds, but was he just the kind of the, you know, the 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 golden, you know, the golden shit. Yeah, but now he's playing in a worse system. Yeah, I don't know. It, well, he's, uh, sorry, I don't think that's a, as big a under. You know, you're. I know, I know. But Papa he, he was he, working under Marcelo yeah, Bielsa. He got his big move to Barcelona, and he's done nothing with it. Yeah, that, I mean, to be fair. I don't think he's really been given a fair crack of the whip by Xavi of Barcelona. I also think that him getting barely any min- any barely any minutes this season, while I mean Yamal is handed a ridiculous amount of minutes, yeah, but, but, while Yamal's been incredible. Exactly, it's, he's sixteen. If Rafinha performed like that, then he'd probably get more minutes. That's a terrible tackle uh, yeah. from Lucas Paqueta, and that's definitely a yellow card within the first four minutes. The referee there, Mark him talking to us, a terrible tackle. Food it back at all. Also, I, I think Lamine Yamal's been very Lucky. good. I, I think he will avoid a card here, but that was a silly one. Lucky. I think Yamal's been very good. I don't know how we've got yeah. into this conversation, but uh, but I do think he is not overhyped because he is very warranting of the of the praise. But I don't think he's as you know. I don't think he's a messy level talent. For oh, me. no, no, I think no, he's no. very good. Yeah. I don't think he will be. I, I think he'll be a world class player, but I don't think he's going to be one of the best in the world. But he's, sure very, he's very, he's very good. I don't think I've emphasised yeah. that enough. Sure, we'll have this free kick. Not after the first one from Foden, then, so we're going to lob it in the box and look for Maguire. And that is exactly who it was aimed for, but it's headed away by Danilo. Good to see him again. I've not seen him in a while, Danilo. Where is he now? Uh, he's still at Juventus. Oh, that's not a fun place to be right now. No. Put on the app. Well, I was going to say, yeah, there are some positives at Juventus right now. They've got a lot of great young talents coming through. They've yeah. got Matthias Sule, who's currently out on loan at... Mm. Um, where is he out on loan? Frozen None. He, but he's a very good footballer. Uh, when he comes back from his loan, I'm sure he'll be great. They've got Kenin Yildiz. Uh, Yildiz, I think is his name. Yeah. He's uh, the Turkish winger. And uh, so there is a positive for Juve yeah. going forward. Yeah, Samuel yeah. Lilling Jr., players like that. He's, Brazil can't get out, though. They uh, are... No, it does... Foul throw. It feels like their defence, I think, is very weak, especially in possession. Yeah. And uh, that is proving problematic for Bruno. But also, England's press is very strong. No, of course. Here it is. Pace. Pace Bruno Gimaraes. They're usually called Gimaraes Bruno, but that's going to be very difficult this evening, um, given this Brazilian side. I think we've, we've, we press him, force him to kick it long, and then we just win it back. It's, it's working uh, too Gary asks, I'm curious, for players like Gimaraes and Paqueta... Do they fly to Brazil then back to England or do they just meet up once the, once the team is here? Um, quite interestingly, Brazil are playing all their games in England. So I'm not exactly sure why, but so are Spain. Again, maybe they're just acclimatising to the German weather. This is, you know, we have quite a similar climate. Be what it, yeah. But it's interesting because Colombia, Spain was played at uh, the London Stadium. The West Ham Stadium. Hot down which was, well, no, it's already happened, so you'd be oh. late. Uh, but that no, that happened, and then Brazil faced Spain, I believe, on Tuesday, or Wednesday, and that is also in England. I'm not sure where, but quite a weird situation. Makes so, sense. Though, when we get used to the German plant without being, but surely you would just go to Germany. Well, I imagine every team's done that, so it's quite difficult to do. And there's more stadiums. Well, it's close, but I would say there's more stadiums in England. Yeah. No, that's quite smart. That maybe our country also is just so nice, like such a lovely place. Yeah. And he's jogging over to get this ball. England, really good start. Brazil are struggling. So, yeah. Is that the captain's arm? Hang on, Danilo, or just a night band? Oh, that is. He is the captain for Brazil tonight. Well, to be fair, who else? He's the longest serving, isn't no, he? No, no, I didn't tell he's a captain. What do you mean? That's just an orange armband. I think most people know. Yeah, maybe. Given he's the only one with it on. 
good from Gordon that we're in there, but he's kicked it away for some reason. And Brazil are actually going to get the ball out. Here's Paqueta. Danilo. Bruno. Beraldo. Chao Gomez. Beraldo. I mean, that's a poor pass, but England let, us, let them get away with it. Rodrigo. Vinicius. Lovely football. Danilo can go wide now into Rafinha, who is looking to take on Luke at Ben Chilwell. Vinicius. Danilo. And now here is Chao Gomez. Okay, this is the good stuff from Brazil, and they're causing England some issues here. Rodrigo coming forward, strikes one low, and it's saved well by Pickford. Yeah, first real test for England there. And uh, too easy, really, for Rodrigo just to drift through the whole team. And good save from Pickford, weren't a great shot, but well dealt with. Yeah. That guy says the Scorpion kick goalkeeper was spotted at West Ham Villa last week. He was here for the Columbia match. Yeah, maybe he just fancied. I was watching some English football before. Uh, Rennie Haguita, I believe his name is. Because when you say he's here for the Columbia match, sounds like a good plan. <laughs> he could. I'll, I'll let him. Bowden, that's another foul in there, Got a firm ones in there. Given this is just a friendly. Yeah. Krepsky. The Brazilians would never do it fairly, though. That Vinicius, not now Paqueta. Take it easy. Down the line to Rafinha, Vinicius, Paqueta. Michel Gomez, Vinicius, Paqueta. Apparently these are the only three players allowed to touch the ball at the moment for mm. Brazil. Now they're moving it. Paqueta and uh, uh, Joao Gomez just working it around. Here they find... I'm not quite... I'm losing who's who. I think that's Joao Gomez. Anyway, on the ball now, Rodrigo. And that goes it long into, Van, into Rafinha, but his touch is poor and Chilwell can close it down quickly and deal with the threat. Interesting to see Chilwell on this side. Yeah. That left back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you, then, hang on. What the earth is he on about? Yeah, no, it's, sorry. No, my bad. Terrible point. Stones. Pickford. Got him, Just laying one left into Gordon. Bellingham. Chilwell. Bellingham. Here's Declan Rice. Now Stones. Walker. Stones. Now Connor Gallagher. Pickford. Maguire just looking to carry this ball forwards. Chilwell. Now Maguire. Rice. Bellingham. Oh, fantastic turn from Jude Bellingham. And now England look to come forwards. Ben Chilwell. It's a bit of a lackluster ball into the box in all honesty. And now Brazil will look to turn us the round. Paqueta, despite a chance from Gallagher, has released Vinicius Jr. in behind. It's a good chance of Brazil should score, but it's rescued off the line by Kyle Walker. Good stuff from Walker. England carved open much too easily. Yeah, really, really poor from England. Just allowed the ball to be driven through our midfield, and then no one's followed Vinny, and I don't know what Jordan Pickford was doing, uh, but well rescued I was by Walker. Say, yeah, really some tame of the... effort, though, from Vinicius Jr. No, nothing behind it. Some of the most bizarre goalkeeping positioning I've seen in the professional I game in a while. I think he was caught, like, on the edge of his what just ball watching on the edge of his area, so he was already committed, so he didn't, he didn't have the benefactor of, oh, superb football. Bellingham is... finds Chilwell, and that is a very good tackle from Danilo, that and that is not from, from Jude Bellingham. Bellingham. He can't book him, though, because if he should have, he didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has, That's on the side, joke, sideways, though. That is an absolute joke. Because... And he's holding the ref, so he does I'm risk sure his I'm sure Bellingham's making it, his point, because Paqueta... Paqueta. 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 Paqueta went through the back of Gallagher in minute four, and the ref let him go. Yeah, that's that. It's a horrible tackle. From that him. is a yellow card. It's a terrible tackle, but come on. No, the Paqueta one was not that bad. Oh, it was. The end of No, it wasn't. Bellingham's caught him stubs up there in the ankle, and it's at pace. Yeah, 
Paquetta hooked his legs round from while no. Carl Walker was down injured. You may hear something mm. that works. Pep's got on the, on the buzzer. Well, either that or Pep's fuming now. Yeah. But yeah, Conor Gallagher couldn't even foul Paquetta properly. And then, uh, yeah, Jordan Pickford, weird positioning. If Vinicius just put a little bit behind that, he, he would have scored. And that count as a goal. Oh, if he actually levelled it into that Maguire. Fucking me. That was targeted. Does that count as a goal line clearance? Because it wasn't on the goal line. No, and it wasn't at a pace. No. More just like a go stand near there and, and yeah. go get the ball. But the ball's which are in that pace and it's got to be closer to the goal than that. So it looks like this will be the end of Carl Walker's evening, probably the end of his England camp, which is both a concern but also possibly a relief if this turns out to be nothing for City. Yeah. As it'll rest up one of their starters. Who, who, who have we got? Who have we called? Joe Gomez? I think it'll probably be Joe Gomez because we haven't signed in. We haven't called up any other right backs. We've gone from all the right backs to just one. My favourite right back, Joe Gomez. Well, we've got Konza who could play there as well, which I, I think that would probably make the most sense. It's laughable the way Walker just clears it down in Maguire. We've got Konza, Gomez, I don't know, Brown takes the other foot and no, Dunk the other foot. Now, you'd think if he's like gone down and not, you just bring him off. Gain doesn't mean that much. But it looks like he's just going to go off and then wave, be waved back on by the referee. Interesting decision. Anything from Southgate on the far side? I'm not no. seeing any action on the subs bench. I think he's staying on, which is weird. Well, he might be not. If he's fit, then yeah. I'm not surprised, but... This will be a concern. He's also lost a bit of his sock. Cons is there because stick the leg I think that's just the, I think his sock tape's just become yeah. a little loose. So it's just flapping around now. England, uh, Brazil, sorry, just upped there it a little bit in the last couple of minutes. Gimelais. Sorry, Joe Jao Gomez. Now Bruno. Baraldo. Finds Wendell. Jao Gomez. Wendell. Gimelaish. Here's Danilo. And Walker is back on the field. Danilo again now. Goes down the line, a lovely ball from Rafinha to find Vinicius. Rodrigo takes it back to Vinicius. Brazil in a great area. Goes around Walker, pushed to the floor. The ref has a decision to make and he goes against Vinicius. Mm. I think that was probably a penalty. Yeah, I think I don't know that. That looked really clumsy from Carl Walker, but it looks like this will be checked. Yeah, I think that's a penalty. Yeah, yeah. he pushed him over. I, I, they asked, that's really poor defending. Does it get. Do we got. No, I think it is. I think it's to get away with it. Is there no VAR on a friendly? Don't know. Well, if there is, it's being useless again. Faketa wins the ball high up the field. Oh, no. Rodrigo. I... Looks to shoot, That's but it's cool. wide. The referee put his whistle in his mouth to blow for the England foul and just didn't give it. You can't do that. Referee just needs to get a bit of control it. He... Look, we're looking all over the shop defensively, says Nick Mac. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised in the slightest. To be fair, that was it because it, obviously we thought we'd get the free kick, so the referee put the whistle in his mouth. Yeah, it's a, I think that's a good win, to be fair. But yeah, I'm not surprised we look defensively. Unstable. No, uh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, chill while getting caught there. Yeah, that would look great. Not a good omen so far, but plenty of times to go. Yeah. But we aren't defensively strong, we know that. Mm. Our, de our defence isn't one of the best in the world. It can be. Yeah. It's just two options, mm. isn't it? So I think Fakai tomorrow is one of the best centre halves in the world. I don't think he's one of the best centre halves in the world. I think that's a huge overstatement. No, I, don't, I don't think so. I think he's a very, very good player. He's a very good player. I don't think he's a, one of the best centre halves in the I world. Think he's in the top 25? No. 30? No. Bellingham? Not he's not in Bellingham, he's not in the top 30 centre halves. Gallagher, brilliant. Watkins in on goal and blasts it over. Rashes the chance, Ollie Watkins, and that is a a brazen opportunity. It's a, it's a difficult one because he's under pressure and he's so close to the goal because the goalkeeper's narrowed off the angle, but he's just 
I want to see, was he falling over or leaning back? Just leaning back, yeah, just... just... Oh, he had to, he had to stretch, stretch to get yeah. to that. Oh, and it took the PK. Yeah. It, he didn't kick it. It was kicked into his leg. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Because it's not terrible. Watkins applying pressure now, but Aldo finds Vinicius, but Vinicius' touch isn't there, and Walker wins it back, but Vinicius has it once more. I think it's frustrating Ronaldo, because we are such Bruno. a good attacking outfit. Our defence just lets us down massively. I'm not saying that Bellingham is leading the press right now. What about the goal kick situation? Because he Pope's injured. Ramsdale, I, I shouldn't be part of the team. I'm sorry. You cannot bring a goalkeeper who can't concentrate on the game for 90 minutes. What's the point? Yeah, well, Ramsdale's never... I don't know, he's never been the best shot stopper. He's very Imagine good. him in a Euros tournament. Ah, oh, 70 years into the quarter final, he's got balls. I imagine I someone's that. injured either that or Jordan Pickford really needs to work on his distribution. No, that... Uh, it's going to uh, be a change. Esri Konza coming on for yeah. Kyle Walker. Walker just making sure to say hi to all his teammates and hand Harry Maguire the captain's armband for England. It's really six in his own net and we all look someone who can revive us. It's, it's going to be him. Yeah, signing Kyle Walker. Not enough to risk it. Esri Konza is going to get a good... 70 minute England minutes in the tank. Uh, Gary Ars is part in the England squad, by the way. Uh, yeah, he got called up, but uh, they decided not to put him in the match day squad. So, huge waste of his time. Uh, I've decided that for friendlies, you can have as many players on the bench as you want. So, and we own the place, so it's not like we're limited by the amount of seats. No. Ridiculous. Don't get it. Really don't get it from Southgate. So, and if you look at the options on the bench... Would you rather see Marcus Rashford come on and stand at left wing for a bit, or Palmer it. come on and see what he can I, I do in the England shirt? Just put them on the bench. They're all going to be at Wembley anyway. And no idea. No idea why he's not named him as such use this evening. I mean, I'd have him. I'd have him starting, and that doesn't come from a place of bias. I think if you compare him and Gordon this season, which is you know who would come in to replace Saka, and Marcus I Rashford. think Palmer's won a better footballer and two had a better season. So. It, it's weird to me that Gordon I starts. I think there's some players in this squad have got something on Southgate, like Henderson and that. I think Gary keep getting called up. Well, yeah. I, 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 the thing is, there is at least an explanation with Henderson of, oh, you know, he he's a leader. Mm, yeah, I get that. Rashford, I don't know. I think there's so many people Southgate that... Southgate just watched Manchester Derby. There's so many people that. that, due to tactical reasons, were quite like Rashford starting at the World Cup, at the Euros. I, I hate saw, his attitude. I, I like him. I just think he's really struggling for form and not really moulded into a footballer very well. Like, he's sort of somewhere between a left winger and a striker, but he's not really good yeah, at that. taking when, players when on. He's not great form. at positioning for a striker, so I don't really know how you mm. use him. But, Neither does Ten Hag. Here's Gordon. But when you've got a dip in form, you know, it's great for his chance to peter out or score. Yeah, but when you've got a dip in form, you, 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 you get back on the training pitch and work hard to sort it out. You don't Go around driving go your court. car, crashing into things and going to parties and, you know, having all these team things that mean you get benched or, you know, having bust up to the manager. Yeah. England free kick as well, again, in another position out He's, there, he's always been a bit of a divisive character, I think, yeah. while he used his platform for good, for, for, you know, some very good courses, Mark Rush, and I think that deserves to be commended. I also think there's a lot of... And he's targeting negative like, press around him. Like the Equally, I think again, as you, yeah. I think a lot of that media does come from a place of of racial bias. Right. Here is Declan Rice, and it's blocked. Why was he just allowed to stand Tets alive here back? by Gordon? <laughs> Bellingham, Gordon, and now they'll look to come the other way. Brazil. Well, Rice's positioning at corners is is superb. That's yeah. why they beat Man United early in the season. Arsenal. Gordon, Gordon gets caught the there. How many more? What was it? The football teams today just keep kicking you. Yeah. Think. Fouls repeatedly, everything a minute. Anthony Gordon's going to strangle one of them, grab by the neck and throw on the floor a minute. This way. Flying into him there, Picasso. No need to do that. Equally, it might work if you just keep winding up at England. This is the sort of stuff you would expect, you know, if you played Estonia yeah. in a game like this, where they just play horrible football and you get loads of injuries. Now, this is what I mean. Though. Not from Brazil. James Ward prowls from here, puts it top corner at Wembley and we're one lap. I've got a question uh, to pose not only to you, but everyone in yeah. chat. Is this the weakest Brazil team in history? 
I think it's hard. I think yes. And that's mental because the attack is so lethal. When you think about the attacks that Brazil have had in the past, they've been ridiculous. Like, I'm talking, like, I'm going quite far back, but you're, you're, you're Pele. Like, Vinicius yeah. Jr. isn't Pele, is he? No, no, he's not even a Ronaldinho no. or a Mario or a Valdo. I think, I think, also, an over injury scenario looks worse, but yeah, it's just terrible. Paul Lim, Maguire, and that's over the bar. And I would, I would argue, though, the, I want to say, 20. 16 sort of era Brazil team. I'd argue that is slightly worse. It's been a really poor era for about, uh, Brazil. I think that, because at least this side, you've got a lot of young talent coming for a lot of promising talent like yeah. Hendrik and stuff. But then they sort of had Neymar and that was about it. I just think defensively, they're, like this defence is shambolic. I know they haven't got Edison or Alisson. It feels like they've been transitioning and into Gabriel's a new... Injured. Yeah, and Marquinhos. Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, the, I think they've been transitioning Ooh. into a new young era of Brazil. For about a decade. Yeah. So that ball just came away from the, in the corner, put in, full city the area. And I think Chilwell's put that into London Stadium from Wembley. That is gone miles away. We're seeing this Rice chance again for some he reason. Did just want, he just thrashed it in the box. I'm hoping someone will get a touch on it. Although it would bounce in. I'm not exactly sure what the thought... It going in, I think that much. Are they trying to claim it's handball? Because if so, we can look and say, well, hang on, it should have been a pen for what, what? the opposition. Yeah. Nice one. But, uh, but yeah. Guy says, uh, certainly the time I've been watching Lee Star studded. Yeah, I, I think that's so. Uh, I think that's a valid point, Gary. I think that Brazil, stereotypically, Brazil have a side where you look and across the board, it's a ta- every single name is yeah. a name you recognise, a household yeah. name. Tonight, I don't, I don't think that's the case. And I don't think their full strength side is the case. No. Nah. Now, this is pretty much their full strength in field now. I can't think I of anyone else who gets in there. Stop. Pepeta is crap. Here's Birmingham. He's not. I don't know what the Brazil manager told him to do. And maybe that mix with David Moyes yeah. has created a monster. But he's not crap. But uh, Gallagher. Right. He's in crap tonight. That means he's crap. He's, he's going played. around. He's uh, crap people. when he plays for Gordon. David Moyes or this manager. When he plays for David Moyes, he's squally. <laughs> this guy just needs a more Brazilian name than his Brazilian name. Pepeta just goes and smash into people tonight. Maybe it's because he doesn't like Gordon. rice anymore. Now, Rice. I'll be honest, I don't think we've really been posed much of a challenge this evening so far. I mean, we're 25 like minutes in. challenge ourselves. The only damage, that the only place where we've been opened up was on the was, uh, on the counter, which is sort of what we expected, because yeah. we are not great at defending transitions. And they've got Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo. We that. lack a, a defined rest defence, really, because... Mm. The midfield three make up so weird because you want Rice to push up a little bit, but Gallagher's not a holding midfielder. No. And so he's not holding. So no one's holding. Everyone runs off. If it's a midfield three, I guess. That's not really what we're seeing here tonight, though, and that is a foul in the box. That's a foul. But Foden and Bellingham on the right-hand side have tried to bear one-two, and as Bellingham's played the ball back to Foden, the Vendel was just stood there and let Foden run into him. Penalty. Vinicius shifts it to Paqueta. Now out wide to Rafinha. And he's looking to take on Chilwell. And that is a silly one from Gordon, but he gets away with it, and that is deemed a good tackle. Chilwell. Ball in behind. Watkins is holds it up well. Had to get away from Bruno. Now lays it off to Gordon short. He's got Foden and Watkins around him. Anthony Gordon will go to Bellingham. Bellingham holds it up well. Back to Gordon. Lovely football from England here. Gordon takes aim. It's headed past the post by Bruno. But England looking threatening. Yeah, really good stuff from England. That was much better coming forward. Looked good, dangerous. That ball into Watkins was good. And a decent effort there from Gordon. Good head. I oh, hit the shoulder, sorry, of the centre half to take it away from the goal. Going to watch back this penalty claim. It's a stable penalty. Yeah. Uh, it's Jao just stands there and blocks Foden's run. I, this row hates penalty. Well, yeah, we're now one, we're now one one. They should have a penalty for yeah. Vinicius Junior. We now should have a penalty for Foden, so we're now even. Now Foden. Ball into the box. Watkins heads it down. Chilwell takes aim, and it's it's a poor effort. Well, it wasn't quite out of London Stadium like his first one, but really. From a, from, a very, from a very good goal-scoring left-back, I'd say. Deadly, really. Two Just terrible efforts. Got that one all wrong. Kicked Tried into to the ground. Well, I think he that was the aim, but he didn't want to hit it gra- to ground as quickly as he did. 
he wanted it to bounce up and so cause yeah, an issue. Not. Instead, he, he sort of hit and it directly the down. One, I don't know where that went. Rest seems to be letting a lot go, says Nick Nack. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. He's a good ref. Uh, we haven't fooled Arthur Diaz. <laughs> we have. <laughs> he said our Saturday morning. Yeah, yes, he, he has. He, did, uh, he sent me off my note. Um, Gary asks, any news on Harry Kane's injury? Is it serious? Just an ankle in it, a few weeks. Is, uh, well, I've not. He didn't miss oh. any games, did he, for Bayern? No, because it happened, it happened the last game for the international break. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I thought it may well be a... It happened in that Darshan game, didn't it? I, I don't... I didn't pay much attention. I remember him only, I remember him only scoring one goal in that game. And then he took it to the And that's damaged his chance of breaking the Lewandowski most goals in mm. a season record. Yeah. Which is crazy that he's up for that. But it was only broken last year by Lewandowski, breaking uh, Gerd Müller's record that stood for like 60 years or something like that. Yeah. I forgot John Sanchez's pitch tonight. He don't... Sure. Well. I, I feel like there's a problem there. What? Because Pep has taken him out of centre-half, hasn't he? Yeah, and That's Southgate's something. not doing anything interesting tactically with this team. No. It's it's a pretty bog I'm standard not, I'm for not, I'm, think, I'm just saying, can Stone, John Stones... Yeah, that's another foul in there from Baguette. Get a joke. Get your cards out, out, referee. That's what Bellingham is protesting to the Come referee. On. Because Gomez, Paqueta, and, and, well, less so Bruno Gimaraes, yeah, but the other two. Uh, yeah, there's no attempts for the ball, that's the yellow card. And that's not the first yeah. foul he's committed tonight. But yeah. it shows that we're frustrating them. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's a really positive sign. At this rate, we're going to get frustrated ourselves and do something stupid. No. But I think, you know, we've got, I think I'm, I'm just saying we see a lot of players, a lot of City players struggle for England because. Pep affects them so much. I hope that doesn't happen to Stones. But it might be less so than half. Well, I don't get why we don't use a box midfield. We've got two different ways we could do it. We've got Trent or Stones. That was a brilliant free kick, that. And now they're coming forwards, but it's recovered well by Gordon. Now it's with uh, Ezra Conza. Pickford. That's out a big scream and then pumps the ball back to their defence. I still don't know that Pickford. I think he's done enough over his time to to warrant. Yeah, I I, being I love him in field, I love him in tournaments, but most of the time I see Ogle's goalkeeper though he can. But he great who else we pick? I was gonna say I think he's, he's like quite fortunate down. that he came through at the right time yeah. and that no clear candidate has come through. Like every other goalkeeper, it's not like we've got a perfect goalkeeper in the backup. Like Pope has shown a little bit of an inability to play the ball at his feet. And I know that is, you know, Pickford is hardly very good at it. Um, but it, uh, there's no advantage yeah. there. And then Ramsdale can't concentrate for 90 minutes. So, no, great cut way. back, just not coming to anything. And then Gordon decides to go leave one on Paqueta for good measure. Yeah, but what ha what happens then in a few years with the... Because who's coming for it at the moment? Trafford. Is he ever going to be starting England goalkeeper worthy? I don't know. The fact that Burnley have dropped him for Murich. Yeah, but he's very young to be playing Premier League football. For a goalkeeper, he's very young. Yeah, I guess. There's a young lad at Southampton, I think, but he's 16, so he's not really 20. Like he's not. He We might be looking at the 2032 yeah. World Cup. Like he was on for the him. bench the other or, one year. Or Euros, I think. Trafford, and then you have someone else. On the bench. Remember Fred, everyone thought Freddie Woodman was going to be like the next big uh, Yeah, thing. yeah, I remember that. Uh, Jamie Cumming, another one. Yeah. I think he now plays his, plays his trade at MK Dons, potentially. Yeah. So, no. Um, Woodman's at Preston. It, it's very really difficult to predict with goalkeepers because senior being a goalkeeper at senior level is very different than being a goalkeeper at youth level. And actually, most of the goalkeepers you see excel at senior level were never really considered to be high prospects. Youth so, level, goalkeeper. Senior, especially in England. Yeah, at youth level, you've just got to make saves. At senior level, yeah. you've got to be involved tactically. Nowadays, yeah. Uh, what do you think of... I, though I think that's changing because youth football, especially yeah. at the professional level, it is much more tactically advanced. Uh, what do you think of a, a Ted Kerr at Chelsea? Obviously, he spent the first half of the season unknown at Hashtag United really, yeah, and he definitely. did really well, yeah. but uh, he is 18. You know, surely he's got to be looking at a, a League yeah. 2 loan for next season, which is quite a jump. Yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued to see how that goes. Or at very least, a top side VNL. Yeah. But that's, I don't think, the thing is, the goalkeeper development path is very different, isn't it? Yeah. Because you could see a 
17 year old in the championship and that wouldn't or in league one on loan like, and that wouldn't be too big a surprise in the, was in league one well and that was i would say that's quite early for a goalkeeper who's tougher in league one forgotten bolton that's the one but uh, yeah uh league one but yeah that's the thing. from bolton to burnley in the premier league yeah so you can make those big jumps as a goalkeeper not sure who else we've got. I don't know who's our 17s keeper. We played yesterday, though, didn't we? Yeah, yeah the sounds of They are 2,000 there from Paqueta. And finally, it has taken the referee 33 minutes to show the Brazilian the yellow card. <laughs> finally, great drive from Johnson. He's out of defence, takes what pass. We, that's a double foul in there. And Paqueta goes into the book. England are going to get it moving. Chill well to Gordon. Gordon being hassled again by Rodrigo really does really well though. Bellingham slots it through to Chilwell superbly, but good defending from Danilo. Oh, Spike Brits, that was it. He was signed by Man City. Um, He's apparently a good goalkeeper. Uh, and then the others play for Chelsea and Vinicius City. Junior feeds through Rodrigo. You've got two Man City goalkeepers in the England U17 squad. Balls to Paqueta, who scuffed one out to Wendell. Blocked. Here's Rodrigo. Paqueta should be a goal. Strikes the post, deflected towards goal. And it's somehow not in the back of the net yet. Rafinha keeps it alive. I don't know how everyone conceded that. And then I'm going back to Danilo. Yeah, no, that should That's be a goal. That's shocking. Well, first of all, we get lucky that Brazil get lucky because Paqueta's scuff shot falls to... Vendel, good block in there. The ball then you know, played back to Paqueta, who is unmarked on the penalty spot, and he lashed it against the post. Terrible miss, really, because Pickford was on the floor. Let off, massive let off. We haven't been brilliant. We haven't been terrible. I don't think we've been terrible. But again, we've looked good calm forward, looked good in the press, but defensively, we're letting ourselves down again. Yeah. It's the story, story of England at the moment, last couple of years. Just letting ourselves down defensively. And again, Rodrigo. Rodrigo is beating Ben Chilwell every single day of the week. Tonight. Gordon's going to run at him. And when he gets run, he's deadly unless Danilo stops him for having a throw. <laughs> it's always deadly unless he isn't. He's pa uh, packets, packets of putting it against the post. Poor effort. Should have scored, really. Yeah, I'm not really sure why no one's closing him down. Huh. Maybe because the bloke, especially doing that, is Conor Gallagher. And as we've established, he can't play. Who would you play in the pivot then? Uh, if it came down to my choice, I would probably... The, the, the issue is, we've not played anyone there. Yeah. So we haven't given any minutes Phillips. to anyone, other than Phillips and Henderson over the last five years. They are shite. And then Gallagher a little higher. So it would have been... I, for me, someone like... And Joe Gomez coming into the side would have made a lot of sense. Yeah. Ross Barkley, given his you know his new role, I'd have been having him in the squad earlier than now, oh, and he's not in the squad now, so he's not going to be in the team for the Euros. Anyone who says Kobe Mania is delusional. The other option is you just you ask Bellingham to do a deeper role, which is very mind. frustrating. Really but the thing with Mania is, I think because he appeared like oh he slotted perfectly into Man United because they're crap. And also he hasn't. Like Foden, good save. Yeah. But like Pele's fair, because he's done that, that we could call him up to England, put him in the starting eleven, and look at, at you know, look, look at him. Yeah, it's the same with like Lewis Miley. I think Lewis Miley's a good footballer. Do I think he should start for England? Yeah, absolutely not. No. Uh, but uh, you know, Miley, Kevin uh, Mayne, players like that, they will be in the England squad f in oh, years to come. Mayne, Mayne. Um, Miley and for me Rice sounds like a lovely midfield three and, and Bellingham as well and, and Weary uh, yeah he'll play up front though will he put his midfielder I think he's a striker he's definitely a midfielder is he yeah he got called out in the midfielders tab in the oh, okay. U17 squad maybe attack midfielder then maybe in which case he can play both, but... there you go yeah I think uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see the England squad in the future the problem is like it's going to be that tra you know, that generational transition. Whether you know, will these young England players go on to be as good as we expect or not? You but never know. We have talent. to win something with this side. Winning, I think, winning something with not winning something with this side would be worse 
than when we didn't win anything with the likes of Lampard, Gerrard, Terry, Ferdinand, all that lot. Yeah, because we've come closer. Yeah. It's not like it's been an unmitigated disaster and it's all been tactically it's wrong. Get and, to a final. You know, the, there seems to be such a strong camp and group hit there. Yeah. For me, I I think that while Southgate has some quite obvious flaws, I think he's one of his greatest strengths is that he's cultivated a really strong group. I, and that's like, probably because he refuses yeah. to change yeah. players, and, which is, you know, part mm. of one of his flaws. But I think that that's... I get that yeah, very interesting. There are, he's not the best manager, but I think, and there's much better out there, but I think he Southgate has enough to win England in a trophy. I, I, I think the perfect situation is that we win the Euros this summer and Southgate leaves. Yeah. Because I'd love to see him win something because he deserves something. He's done really well with England. He deserves I, that, I would forever love you know, those flowers for his achievements. Oh, I'll buy more flowers in the world if we win the Euros. Metaphorical, but yeah, you can buy him some roses, uh, not the chocolates. But I think, I, I think it's. I wouldn't want to go into twenty twenty six with Southgate. No. I'd, I'd I'd like to see us actually, you know, try and play. Especially some if we have won the Euros, then that makes us hot favourites for if the we, World Cup. There's a, there's I only really see this tournament going two ways. One of two ways: either we have an unmitigated disaster, in which case we have to get rid of Southgate anyway, or we win it. In which case he deserves, you know, let him go mm. out on a high. It never, you never win unless you're the Spanish national team of 2010 to 2014. You never win. It was, it was have I got my timers right? I think so. Um, but you never win back to back international oh. tournaments. It's so yeah, un- cut, unheard Paqueta, of. Paqueta again has done it again, and Bellingham's asking for the second yellow. He can't keep going around doing this. I mean, you literally see what yeah. Bellingham was saying. There. That's two now, man. Fucking hell. And uh, that is so valid. And Joe's pointing out, he, he can't keep going around kicking people. He's already been booked. How many fouls? He's got a walk, ref. He's got to walk. That's the yellow card. You know. <laughs> yeah, he's spot on. But yeah. Nina yeah. says France won back to back tournaments. When? What, 2016, 2018? No, they didn't win 2016. Let's drop them back in the day. I mean, a very irregular, though, that you win back-to-back tournaments. So, for me, it makes sense to let South Africa out on a high and then rebuild from, yeah. you know, build for the future from there. Gordon cuts inside, lets one fly, and it's saved well. But if you look at most, most World Cup winners going into the next year, you could say, obviously, uh, France won 2018. They then had the worst tournament in their history, Yeah, really, at, at the Euros in 2021. Then they had the, then they lost in the final of 2022. Yeah. But that is, and that's an incredibly strong France side. Germany. They won the World Cup in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and then they were, they've not done anything since. Yeah. And Joachim Lowe, you know, that Germany team was terrible in the 2016 <laughs> Euros. So it's very, it's very unheard of. That you see, other than that Spain team and uh, Nick Nightmare. What has Mariah just done? Oh, what oh, a thank pick. God, Jordan Pick. No, no, it's a poor effort, really. Apparently, it's a goal kick. But that is um, why well, Harry Maguire shouldn't be starting for England. He's just put, he put Rodri- he's brought the ball down in the defence as it comes to him, and he's taken one too many. I mean, firstly, his, that shit from put, Chilwell. Put, 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 Secondly, that shit from Maguire. Save. I mean, we have put Maguire and Chilwell on the same side. It's asking for trouble. Like, Chilwell's not a great <laughs> season. I love Ben Chilwell. He's not, he's it's not even good. that. He's not a defensive fullback. No. So that's fine, but you have to have a left. Uh, you have it's to have a centre half there who's it's going to cover him. I can see. He didn't touch him. He, I don't think he got touching it to be honest. Yeah. Maguire holds his hand out. Don't know what's going to do. Um, that way, mate. Sam asks, "Who's your favourite superhero and super villain?" And we've got some good answers in chat. Gary Vyshen put Wayne Rooney. So. And then Joe on less got of Carlos Tevez is super villain. <laughs> I would say Black Panther. Or Deadpool, but does Deadpool count as a hero? He shoots a lot of people. Mm. Um, but I just, I just like ones that have personality. Not really asked about Captain America or, or Batman, and then villain. Um, the bloke from You on Netflix, he's creepy, or he's not really a villain per se, as in a super villain. Right. I would say this has taken well, one hell of a tangent. Not. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. The Joker's a good villain. Very good villain. Uh, Nick Nack says, have to win one tournament first before we worry about that anyway. Or we should win a tournament. But that, I think it, whatever happens at Euro 2024, I don't think Southgate should be the manager at 2026. No. Go head to, head off to North America, to North America World Cup. Fresh start. You are going to absolutely take my storm. Right with the ball in. And let Southgate go to Man United. Please let Southgate oh, go to Man so United. Who would you bring in then for England? If we're, if we're sticking English, you have two real candidates. Yeah. Of, well, three. I'm going to throw a wild card in there, actually. The obvious ones are Eddie Howe. Saying he could be out of a job anyway. A, a great point. Could be out of a job anyway. And, uh, you know, as pl- I think most of the other lads... If, you go to Eddie, if Eddie Howe manager. went sacked by Newcastle, right, and then you say to him, we'll bring you after, we'll bring you in after the 24 Euros no matter what, Yeah. I think he agrees to that and doesn't take a club job. You've got Graham Potter, but well, I don't think... I don't think he's at the right stage of his career no. for international After management. having, like, a very bad spell. You ready for a mental shout? No. Mark Robbins. The Coven- Coventry manager. Yeah, yeah. I, I first thought he hit someone else, and I was like, <laughs> no. no, definitely not. Mark, Mark <laughs> Robbins golly. would be my rogue shout. No. Because I like him. Anyway, phone with the ball in. He has to stay at Coventry until day. day. Punched away. He, he has to die that pit. Like, he's no death okay, pit. well, that's why Gallagher shouldn't play for England. Christ alive. Why is he playing in a pivot? I don't know. I love Conor Gallagher, but he cannot play in a pivot. How many times do we need to do this experiment until we finally realise the results aren't going to change? To be honest, it's been pretty disappointing first half. Well, oh, Christ, it's nearly over. We didn't, didn't realise it's gone rapid. Yeah, we've just sort of talked our way through the first half. That's what England games yeah. are. That's yeah. friendly. We're just enjoying the football. We'll have a chat about England's prospects. We, every time we talk about the Rice, and that's blocked well. Rafinha won back by Gordon. Oh, and Gordon's got to do more there. Yeah, yeah. I think um, if we don't win 24, do we just gamble on, on Jose Mourinho for 26, win the World Cup and go, fuck it, we're, we're England? That's going to be us disgusting football. We might just do it. Just to, win, just to win something. And Nina says, with any luck, Pep will be up for the England job. I This is going to be controversial, but I don't think Pep Guardiola will be a very good international manager. Oh, I'm not doubting that he's an incredible manager, but I think a lot of what makes Pep so good is his perfectionism and how meticulously he works with the players. So... International management is very different. You get two weeks every two months at most, three months. I mean, we've not had an international break now since November. Yeah. You get two weeks every every few months, and you've got to try and cultivate and and under, and you know build a tactical understanding and all that. That's not Pep. Pep spends years crafting his yeah. sides into these winning machines that play perfect, meticulous football and. You can't do that on the international stage. So mm-hmm. while he won't, he he's not going to be a bad international manager. He is an incredible manager. I'm sure he would still make it work. I don't think he's an ideal manager. So I, I don't know. I, I think for international management, there's going to be better out there, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Southgate's very suited to that because he's not a good tactician. He's, he's good not meticulous, ideas. but he's mo- he can motivate a side. He can motivate a yeah. side really well. Let me get the talking manager in. Because that man can motivate me to do anything. Here's Gordon. Mark White. Imagine him. I think I'd, buy, I'd do everything properly. I'd be scared of putting the plate in the wrong place. <laughs> at a dinner table. And uh, offside in there. I'm not exactly sure on who. Or why that's been called. Because they were like... breaking the other way. But fair enough. Uh, Dazman, I was watching the stream as well. Guy says, can you imagine the media insanity with Pepper's England manager? Yeah, that would break the internet. Yeah, that says, come on, Pep's better than Southgate at any level of football. Yeah, but it's not... I don't know. That's half-time. Yeah, that is half-time. It's nil-nil here at Wembley. Uh, no surprises, really, there, is there? No. Turns the actual... But in terms of I think Eng- bit, England so. have been the best side. Yeah. The only ties who've really been threatened by Brazil are on are in tra- in transition, which makes sense because I'd, we're not we haven't got the strongest rest defence. And Brazil's time, Brazil's attacks really quick. Uh, Vinny should have scored and Walker cleared it. Uh, 
Paqueta hit the post. Yeah, if he put any sort of power yeah. on that shot, it was in. Uh, Paqueta hit the post. That was unlucky, wasn't it? Rodrigo was played for on goal by Maguire. And the penalty that they should have had. Yeah, so they've had four goals, really, that they should have scored. Yeah. <laughs> but if we ignore that, uh, we've been really good. Yeah, we have been We good. should have a penalty, really, for the Foden chance, for the Foden foul. Um, any other real highs to note in terms of shots? No. Not really many clear cut opportunities. Chilwell has had two that have fallen to him on the edge from corners. One went out of the ground and one went very far wide. So that, that tells you a lot. Yeah. Um, apart from that, I don't remember any clear cut chances for England. There's not been a whole whole host. If you look at the big chances, the big chances missed. Uh, both, well, England have had one and they missed it. Brazil, three. Wow. And they, and they, missed, all, they missed all three. So, yeah, but both eight shots apiece. Brazil, one pass more than England, so there's not really anything in the possession. England have had longer possession, though, so make of that what you will. I see that England just stopped on the ball a bit longer. Yeah. But not, really a whole, not been a whole lot to split the two sides. Brazil's opportunities, though, have just been a little bit more clear-cut. Yeah. Um, I think England, England having a lot of the possession when they are camped in Brazil's third and struggling to break down a Brazil side who are playing very defensive football um, for Brazil. They're, they're not playing attacking football today. No. And they probably won't because they want. But it makes sense. Tournament football's better to play. It's disappointing to see. I think, really, to see a Brazil side, yeah, so poor at, that are playing. You know, aren't playing very attacking football. It's really disappointing. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Chessman says Pep will be better than Southgate. Come on, Jack. Yes, but and the other issue with Pep is we have seen how English people have reacted to their flag being slightly altered. Imagine a Spanish manager. Oh, there would be riots in the street. Keir Starmer would be protesting. In fact, all that would be the thing that unites all the political parties. I do think, though, if we if we restrict ourselves to English managers, we are we are limiting our ability to win titles. Yeah, because I don't think there's a whole host of good. It says a lot that there is not a single English manager that's ever won the Premier League. No. In its what forty year existence? Yeah. That well, thirty year existence. Not a single English manager is on the Premier League. Fascinating stuff. But yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. You know, I I, I don't know what we're expecting. I really don't. But I, 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 I you know, again, no, sim, it's a similar delusion that you have as a football fan. I 100% back Southgate to win us the Euros this year. Wow. That is a hell of a shout but I will I'll agree with you yeah but I backed him 100 to win us the World Cup and the Euros before that and the <laughs> tournament before that I don't that. Plan, did it remember the 2016 year race where we got lots of Croatia oh I thought we were going to win that one I really really did yeah uh, and then like asked what's the XG out of interest there isn't really there's no XG model doing the game tonight apparently Um, so that's fun uh, Gary says I hear Bielsa's is out of a job that would be either the most genius masterstroke ever and we would all love Marcelo Bielsa if we play the most beautiful brand of football and win everything, or an unmitigated disaster as we capitulate on the world stage. I'm here for it. Either mm. way, it's going to be, you know, ride or die, Marcelo Bielsa survives. In the stage that work? England are now, you have to get it right. The, the, the squad we have is a squad that should be winning tournament after tournament, so you have to get that appointment right. Yeah. Because if you, if but you is there it, is there any perfect? You know, you, you can't. There's there's no appointment where you go. That's guaranteed mm-hmm. to work. I think I, I think Eddie Howe would be an interesting one because I worry that new like in knockout in knockout football in the Champions League Newcastle were terrible. But that wasn't in knockout the, football. Group stage. Good point. Good point. So he's never played uh, FA Cup and domestic uh, Carabao Cup finalists. He's not. He's year, not the then. loudest. For me, an underrated shout could be Rob Edwards. Because not now in a couple of years. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I don't want him to leave Luton. God no. I, I, I'll make sure he doesn't. I, I will England. stand there and make sure he doesn't leave. Well, defensive football work, tends to work at tournaments. That's tends to win I titles. He is such a presence on the sideline, yeah. so vocal, and I think that's that can make such a difference in those games mm. where it's like the 85th minute. You need a bit of inspiration. If your manager is sat down, fucking pondering things on a tablet nah, writing cool. things down you're gonna be pissed off well, this is if your manager is jumping up and down screaming shouting and, and letting it all out the, that motivates you the thing with eddie howe is you don't just appoint eddie howe 
you get Jason Tindall as well. Imagine. He would come. They would come together. But would he? Oh, unless unless he thinks he could get the Newcastle. Would job. he go? I don't think he'd get the Newcastle job. That would be hilarious. Oh, no, he'd love it in England. Would he go? No, I th- he would, but I don't think England are going to take it. Why not? Well, because they tend to... I think Holland would walk with Southgate. Do you think Holland would go? Yeah. Where? They've worked together for so long. Him and, him and Southgate to United? Yeah. Oh, that'd be so funny. And, and then, because I, I think it'd just be start fresh and bring in Jason. Imagine Jason Tindall at the national tournament. He'd lose his head. I'm trying to chat to Didier Dave, <laughs> yeah. You're right, Didier. <laughs> Come that that guy's a bit of shit, isn't he? <laughs> Making little jokes. Yeah. And then, like, I'll burn him because he's not yeah. laughing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. <laughs> you know you are that. He starts calling him Dids or something. <laughs> Julian Nagelsmann's just, like, absolutely oh. baffled as to what on earth he's on about. Put Nora, put, put Nora at front. Go on, you won't. But, yeah, overall, it's been a terrible game of football. Like, there's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to go right about. Really yeah. Not, you know. Great one. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nack says, about as even as again, looking at the sh- uh, stats on possession, shots on goal and shots on target. Yeah, that's what that's what we were saying a couple of minutes ago, but Brazil have missed three big chances. Exactly that, Nick Nack. Uh, Jess Van said, we said this before, look what happened. Uh, Dan says, out of this, these starting tonight, who goes in Tuesday's lineup? I don't really know. What, what what do we expect for Tuesday? Will it be more the same in terms of full strength or will um, we rotate it to I think give Tony opportunities? Okay. Um... I'd like to see Cole Palmer in the squad. Why is he not starting tonight? Why is he not starting? No, the front three for Tuesday will be Rashford, Tony and Foden. Yeah. That's my prediction. I don't I think it could be an entirely different eleven just because he'll be hoping not to piss off any international any uh, club managers. Yeah, maybe. So I think we could see an entirely like different Pep team. Does not want Stone playing 180 minutes. No. I... Uh I think that whoever starts tonight will probably start on the bench. But if you're going to put, gonna play, if you're going to put Ramsdale in, I'd rather put Sam Johnson. No, in I don't, well, goalkeeper doesn't really matter. Yeah, but Everton. You'd think we'd right. keep. Why would Everton care? What's he going to do? Oh, he's pulled his hamstring. He's playing too much in goal. Maybe. <laughs> Breaks his... No. Even John Pig would probably play through any injury. Well, a, yeah, but a contact injury, you can't really get annoyed at. A muscle injury, you would be annoyed because yeah. it's like, well, why have you overplayed him? He needed two weeks off. Yeah. But you're not, you're not getting a muscle injury in goal. Doing. It's not impossible, but it's not the regular finger muscle. If you've got to get a pussy's finger muscle, you've got bigger issues. <laughs> like why is the goalkeeper? That's the use of the hands. Got that Everton needs to question the medical department and what's the goalkeeper? What's the goalkeeper been up to? But yeah, uh, MD Raj, welcome to the stream. MD Raj saying Brazil, welcome, welcome, our first Brazilian fan. Um, but welcome. Uh, Brazil are dominating the poll in chat, by the way. 49% of people voting for Brazil, 47% going England, and 4% going... Does that not speak volumes saying that we usually get landslide victories to England? I think our Scottish audience has risen dramatically recently. Yeah. Or we've got a lot of Brazilian you know, fans. I, I think, it, yeah, and potentially that is that is the case. If you are from Brazil, say hi in chat, get involved as, as MD Raj has. Um, but I also think a lot a lot of England fans will probably just be pessimistic yeah. tonight. Because Brazil are Brazil. Historically, Brazil are the best national team. So, mm. very difficult. Who is the best national team around like France? Right now? Yeah. I know Argentina are world champions. I don't think Argentina are the best. Yeah. I think that France are were a better team in that in, in that tournament and in that game than Argentina. It was just the whole feeling, yeah. Around Argentina, and Messi was incredible throughout the tournament. And, and, and that is Laurie. Yeah, that really pushed them on. I think, though, France is probably the best team. Then England. They're probably not a fence. Let pound for pound. Much. I think we are probably the second best team. That attack is... The attack... You can't look past an attack. A front four of Saka, Bellingham, Foden and Kane. Yeah. And when you, start, when you start looking at Argentina without Messi... It becomes a lot more bleak, I think. Yeah, but and then it, what happens? If, but Where does that magic come from? Is there a massive shift as well, though? If you look at France without Mbappe. Yes, but Mbappe's not going I anywhere. Know, I know, I know. That's like you know, if England didn't have Jude Bellingham, yes, they would be a worse team. That is, un, un, yes, we would be. Put Kyle Sorry, Gallagher first, right? Did you say I don't know? <laughs> He's our best player I by quite some distance. Actually, look, I don't know who's the best player tonight. It's not really been the game. 
I think uh, it's not a game to judge. I don't think you can judge. have an opinion on this game. Nothing's happened. Uh, Nick now says, I voted Brazil because I'd rather England win. I get my prediction wrong than the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, just predict the opposite of what I want to happen because then either I'm right or I'm happy. So <laughs> you, it's a win-win either way. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, Daz is saying... Are you doing the game on Tuesday? Yes, it will just be me on Tuesday. So do get involved in the live chat. Loads of people here tonight, which is brilliant to see. Uh, yeah, do get involved in the live chat on Tuesday for England, Belgium. Uh, it will just be me that night. Harry might join us right at the end, unlikely, but no. Okay, Harry definitely won't join us at any point in the game. So yeah, get involved in the live chat. Feel free to say hi. Uh, Nick now says we saw how crap Bellingham are, uh, how, how crap England are without Bellingham in the last match. Yeah, Bellingham really drives everything good for England. Yeah. Um, and understandably so he's a brilliant footballer yeah. so uh, for me you have to put the side around him you've, you've got to build a team that facilitates Jude Bellingham being yeah. the best player he can the biggest question is how does that work with with Kane the Kane's going to drop in he's going to take his space but I think you just push him on then you sort him around then. well yeah maybe that is how it works uh, which is Bellingham perfect play up front for, uh, for Real Madrid quite similar to actually what Tottenham do or were doing when they had Kane. Yeah. In that Kane would drop in and, and Son would make that run in yeah. behind. But instead it would be Bellingham. Which sounds very good. Yeah. And nice then you'd still have the wide Absolutely. options of Saka and Foden, I think, will probably be the wingers. Yeah. If if it's Saka and Rashford, I, I will cry. I don't think I think it would be very weird to see Rashford starting every game for England at the yeah. Euros. I think that would be a wrong call. But yeah. Uh, I think that says the problem with Kane is he drops too deep but uh, yeah as we're tackle, trying to tackle that issue does Bellingham make that run but into the space created by Kane dropping deep yeah. that could be a great way to sort that sort that issue Chelsea Man says keep hitting that like button people and sub to the channel they deserve more subs thank you Chelsea Man for your kind words and as Chelsea Man says if you want to help us out do hit subscribe it does uh, does help us out massively but yeah yeah um, changes for second half you'd expect so I'm saying it's a friendly yeah, I'd expect to see some some changes. I think we'll probably see Tony come on at yeah. some point. Maybe oh, he'll save that, but that could be yeah. that could be soon. Yeah. Uh, who else have we got in midfield? We got. I'm trying to think of who's on the bench tonight. I'm just gonna have a look rather than guess who might be on there. Uh, we well, Kobe Mainu. I think we'll probably see him make his debut at some point tonight. Yeah. You know, they, he wouldn't have picked him if he wasn't going to start him. Because he wouldn't take anyone if they're just going to leave him at St George's, uh, Palmer. Bowen, on to the right flank oh, at yes, some point this on. evening. James Madison, Joe Gomez, Jared Branthwaite. Oh. Branthwaite's an interesting one. Look at that. Someone just proposed. Two Brazilian, some Brazilian man should propose to his, his partner. And she said yes by a reaction. What a way. Is, what a I would argue that's probably the best proposal yeah. I've ever seen. Wembley Stadium while your team's drawing you... to England international friendly. Oh, How romantic. On. That is uh, lovely. Lo Frisky, lovely. If it goes wrong, you've got to walk out. And you're well, well to I was going to say, game. you've got to sit there for the next 45 minutes next to each other. So you're screwed. Oh, you go, oh, I'll do that type of show. I'll go sit in the opposition then. But in the same sense, it gives the person you're proposing to no option. Yeah. Because either that or they've got to sit there for 45 minutes in a really awkward situation. Yeah. Where they're, all the camera's on them and they say... Nah, mate. Just like everyone <laughs> who's watching right. this broadcast has just seen that man. And he got his mates to sit behind and put up some banners that said, well, you I, I think I'm too pathetic to reject a proposal. I think if someone proposes, I just have to say yes. No, I'd say Even I'd, 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 if I'd, it's in public, no, I no. I don't think I could say no. I could. I think I'd have to say yes and then afterwards go, don't sorry, actually, don't I don't. In public, you don't if you're not 100% sure, yeah, yeah. obviously. Don't, I would say, I would say don't propose unless you're 100 percent sure. Because <laughs> if there's any doubt, why? Well, you do it in the kitchen. You can find out. Um, anyway, as I was trying to say before yeah, we've got on this tangent, Jared Branthwaite. What? Where does his um, England future he's lie? Maguire. <laughs> well, that's, that's that conversation, guys. And that's a lot because Maguire's starting. So I think I think he's very good. Is, like is he in our? Do you think he's our long term? I knew some black people. Then when, when we first saw the England squad, and I was with a few people, there was something that I hadn't even heard of him. And when I was reading out the squad, they thought I said Braithwaite. I was going to say, um, you should probably reconsider who your friends are. Yeah, with. I'm not, not my friends. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching, guys. Um, but in terms of, <laughs> in terms of <laughs> a, a perfect backline, 
terms of a perfect back line for England's future, does it look something like Colwell playing left back, situational back three yeah. type thing, Branthwaite, yeah. Gerhi or Tamori, yeah. and then Tina Livermento? That's so strong. Is that just that... water, by the way? That? Yeah. Yeah. Can I just drink from that side of the glass? No. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you can if you really want to. But I'm going to get some disinfectant. Anyway, second up, <laughs> please spill on yourself. <laughs> no, that would be incredible stuff. Anyway, uh, second up, I've had to get underway here at the Wembley Stadium. Might as well finish it off and then I'll just hit something else in there. And also get ready because the second half's about to kick off. Conor Gallagher knocked him out and ran away in the second half. Unfortunately, we don't have any timer yet, but we are underway in the second half. England versus Brazil, 0-0 at half-time. Will we see England get it back? Possibly. Who knows? Anyway, Germany goal in eight seconds, apparently. No, good one's too good. I wish we could see a goal in eight seconds. <laughs> I haven't seen one in 45 minutes yet. But yeah, not sure who that is that's just been caught. It was... Rodrigo getting shoved on the floor. And then falling into rice. Looks painful. Brilliant. But yeah, uh, Daz asks, who do you think he takes to Germany? Also, how many changes he allowed? Or is it limited or unlimited? It should be unlimited this evening. It's a friendly, but I'm yeah. not sure what the rules are. Um, Nick now says, too early to say, will depend who's fit, except we know Rashford, Maguire, Henderson, etc. will be in the squad. Hang on. What? Well, since there was Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank involved in the England setup, that's been Frazier's, hasn't he? He's our striker coach. Oh, I didn't know that. I think. Mm-hmm. He starts scoring some goals then, he's teaching us. <laughs> Should be lethal. Should be. But yeah. Bruno under pressure. I think he was brought in last summer. I yeah. seem to remember him. After that came Penway. <laughs> yeah. It might be before the tournament, actually. On, yeah. on reflection. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, can't remember. Anyway. It's crazy that Here's the World Foden. Cup was only last December. Gallagher overlaps now back towards Foden, but it's recovered by Xiao Gomez and then yeah, that World Cup Wendell was gets found. 14 months ago. That's ridiculous. That does feel like a yeah, wow. very short amount of time. World is flying by. I mean, we've got the and the, the Euros. Yeah, in a couple of months. Yeah. Does I don't know whether it's just as I've got older. The break between international uh, international uh, tournaments feels smaller. Maybe it's because also the women's get also watching watching the women's tournaments now as well. Makes it feel like we've got one every year. Maybe. It's interesting. It's interesting to think about. I think it's well. I think that might just be a consequence of the fact that the last few years have been ridiculous. With the Winter World Cup. Well, that and the and fact that COVID. 2020 oh, was delayed yes. to 2021. That's why. So we only had a, on. we only had 18 months there, that explains and it. then we had a Winter World Cup. So we were only, yeah. again we've only got another 18 month period. Might feel different, but the gap between this year's Euros and the 2026 World Cup might feel bigger. Yeah, I think it probably will. Then we've got the women's Euros in Toto 5 in between. So it'll be interesting to see whether well, there is a big difference there. Yeah. Also, my chat isn't working, so um, can you read out chat? Uh, where'd you get to? Oh, no, hang on. It might work again. Okay. But yeah. Now, Nick Nass's atmosphere seems a bit quiet. We can't hear it, Nick Nass, so... What yeah. have got to cheer about? Also, it's not even also it's still was turning from lunch. Nick Nass says you're just getting older. Time goes quicker. Oh, thank you. That's made me feel really happy about my future. Uh, time just runs away. Ball in from Foden. Not a bad ball. Maguire heads up, up in the air. air. Keeper only punches it. Maguire goes for a bicycle kick. Best Didn't stuff. work, funnily enough. Dad says, I think we've had a change. I don't see anyone new. Cons are game on in the 12th minute. Yeah. No, I lie, 19th minute. Unless Maguire's up front. System change. The Stones here just brought down by Paquetta again. How many more, referee? How many more? Is he on a yet, though? Yes. I don't think we're going to... The, the, the thing is, unless it's a horrible challenge, I don't really want to send someone off in a friendly. It doesn't actually achieve anything. Yeah. Anyway. 
funny, eh? England versus Brazil. It's been a bit of a drab affair so far. Can that change now with this free kick? Rice, ball into the box. Maguire can't meet it. Gordon can. Save well by Bento. That's a good effort from Gordon. Best effort of anything from anyone in an England shirt tonight. It's an equally as good save. And, uh, well, yeah, brilliant stuff from Krepsky. Bruno Gareich. Now Danilo sends it up for the touchline, but let's add a touch, and that will be an England throw. D Nick, Nick's, Nick Nick asks, are refs more lenient when it's a friendly? Yeah. Yeah, of course, because th there's no competition there, so no one's going to feel unjust if there's not a red card. And also, if anything, it's better not to send players off. Obviously, you have to, Sometimes it's un unavoidable. If someone puts in a horrible tackle, you sort of have to send them off. But... England learned nothing tonight by playing a 10-man Brazil yeah. team, other than that they can't break down a 10-man Brazil team. So, yeah. Also, did you know the these sides haven't met for seven years? Wow. First meeting between the two. Like and the, the last time England beat them was 2013. However, we haven't lost to Brazil since 2007. So, wow. yeah. So, use a drawing. Yeah. England boy have been on the wrong end of 15 fouls. Well, I think it's just that we don't play them very often, obviously. No. England have been fouled 15 times. It's a terrible way to word it. Fouls suffered. Suffered. I oh, should suffer the foul. Gosh. <laughs> I'm now in, in immense pain. Pickford. Time. I've never seen the statistic fouls suffered before. No. Usually it's fouls. Yeah. I think they're just trying to. The problem is because it's England centric. They're trying to make it. They are trying to point out how badly England have been attacked. Yeah. Or suffered. Was... So it's how many times. Yeah, it's Better not how many fans have Brazil drive. committed. But they should have just put fouls and the big number on Brazil's side. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what time is kick off on Tuesday? I'm not exactly sure myself, Daz, so I will check for you. It is quarter to eight. So I'll be live on here from half past seven. Yes. Yeah, join us. Join me live. Should be good. Uh, keep the chat active because I won't have anyone to talk to. So if not, I'll get really lonely. <laughs> so yeah, be here. Make sure to get involved from half past seven. Uh, and then that is it for England until the 3rd of June, where we will be warming up for the Euro. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Oh, tell me about it. I am very excited. Going to win it. Yes. Going to win it all. Sweet Caroline's back on. It's coming Do you like, by the on. way, how every team to prepare for the tournament plays sides that are similar to who they're facing in the group stages? Yeah. So we're playing Bosnia and Herzegovina, mm -hmm. and I think this is deliberately because we have, Slova uh, so we have Slovenia and Serbia yeah. in the groups, and we're playing Iceland, which is good because we're, we have Denmark in the groups. So it feels like we're mm. playing sides deliberately that are similar to us. Yeah. I'm also happy that we've been scheduled no two o'clock kickoffs, only fives and eights. So that's good stuff. So like Bellingham. Be... Oh, no, we'll probably both do the yeah. No, well, I, I was yeah. going to assume you were going to join me for the England yeah. game. But yeah. In case you don't know, guys, we are planning on covering every match at the Euros. Now, if that doesn't happen, do not come for us. But There's a that is a chance that we might go. Hang on a minute. Let's rethink this. <laughs> yeah. After a week, and Harry's like. Dragging himself out of the studio. Hi guys, two two p.m. again. Welcome to Croatia versus Albania. <laughs> oh, <I was> Bro, <laughs> always there on the bridge. God, that's not even one of the worst ones. There's yeah. Kazakhstan versus Wales. Playoff winner B. I don't know why we don't know the name yet. Well, that's something else we'll find out on Tuesday. Yeah. The last three teams of the Euros. Will Wales make it? They've got to play Poland. No. You've got Ukraine, Iceland. Hope Ukraine get it. Vinicius ball across the box. And, well, sure, I'll just poke that out. Four, Someone's eight, got to tell you to do that, then. And then Georgia, Greece. You are joking. What? One of those two sides of the Euros. Well, joke. if Greece had lost to Kazakhstan, the Kazakhstan had a chance against the Euros. I think George... No, george has got, like, um, Kavatskelia, Mardashvili... And... <laughs> exactly. George Miktaudze. I can the... make up a Georgian name. No, he plays for FC Mets. Okay. I'll strike that. Yeah, see? Oh. Not just making up names that sound Georgian. 
I mean, that would be the shittest one, wouldn't it? I'll say George. <laughs> Georgia. But yeah. I think I think I'll come up with something a bit more creative. But yeah. Where do we play June the third, says Daz? Probably Germany. Yeah. I would expect Daz. Greece won it one time, yes, two thousand and two? Yes. Four? But that's like Around there. saying West Germany won it. What's the doesn't the meaning? What? Most Germany did win it. So does that mean Germany will win it this year? Must do. Oh yeah, crazy that we've that Greece have won more European championships than we have. At the moment. Yeah, for now. Four months time that will change. Amir Ragru, uh, Ragragui, apologies, I've absolutely butchered that. But welcome to the stream. Says this game is so tight that I'm really hoping England wins against Brazil at the end of the game at full time. Yeah, I hope that uh, England can find a way through in this tight affair. Welcome to the stream, Amir. But yeah. And there we go. Sorry to if anyone thought they were in a wind tunnel oh, yeah. there. <laughs> okay. But I thought I was in a wind tunnel. Here's Rice. Pickford. No, it's, um, it's been one of those games. It's not, it's not been a bad game of football. No, just no on. goals have gone in. Yeah, it's been a bad They've game. gone close. They have. If, if Brazil finish all their chances, they'll be 4 0. The highlight of the game was that bloke proposing the half time. <laughs> yeah, at least he actually finished the job. Yeah. Well, I wish those two the very best of luck for the future. Yep. Yeah. They have a long and prosperous marriage where both are happy. If they aren't happy, then they shouldn't. Here's Foden. And he can't nod onto that ball. Paqueta. Gimaraj, Rafinha in its block well by Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell surprised me by how uh, inept, yeah, that is the right word, I think, inept, he has been defensively today. He's been okay. Because usually he's, he's shit. Yeah. Is inept good or bad? I don't it know. sounds bad, doesn't it? He's inept at that. I can't remember. Not might either. be positive. I can't remember. Um, Anyone in chat can tell me if inept yes. is a positive or negative. They, I mean, England fans have got bored. They have created fake aeroplanes. So that's a new feature. There's like five of them on the pitch right now and more are getting thrown. It's a great fake aeroplanes, by the way. Someone's reached the middle of the pitch. They are covering so many yards. Uh, they've got the to be the They've got to be um, upper oh, tier. Yeah. No, that one's near the centre circle. That one, is, that one is in the centre circle. Have they come, though, from the ends or the sides? Oh, they significant, the sides. Yeah, That's exactly. Pathetic. They come from the end, find the person who <laughs> threw that and get in the Olympics. Yeah, I don't they know what sport. Know. Shot put. No, because that's a big heavy ball. Javelin. Frisbee. Javelin's the same, isn't it? It's just like a like longer thing. And it made of metal. No, it's not. What do you think the thing in the end that goes into the ground is? Oh, the rest of it's plastic, though, isn't it? I don't actually know. Gordon plays a one two. I think they should use foam javelins where you don't know you can't predict where it's gonna go. Chill. I mean Chill was playing against us there, but Yeah. There we, we go. Are. That's what I've done in that situation too. It's um it, there's a trio warming up for England. Jared Brandt plays one of them and Carl Walker has returned back to the not the bench, but why is Carl Brandt sat there? He's the only player there. The rest of them are staff and Walker is injured. I don't know why Palmer's not involved mm. tonight. Unless Potter he must, bed, something. He has to start, though. But why is he there? If Potter says something, why is he there? Why is he not back at Cobham? Maybe it was one of those where Potter doesn't want him playing. Here's Chill on the overlap. Tries to cut oh, it back. Option. Wrong option. Gordon, Bellingham, Stones. Let's fly with it. I was someone hit it, but not John Stones. If Potter has done that, and people like Pep and Arteta haven't, though. Yeah, it is weird. But could it be that Potter said something, but Southgate has said that he wants to keep him around the squad because he plans to have him at Euro 24? Maybe. For me, though, uh, it's, it's, a niggling training. he's more playing. worth playing a friendly for England than he is playing anything, you know. We are not. We might be sitting in the FA Cup semi final. But it's weird, because you think he's going to play for the Tuesday game. 
I'd rather that as a Chelsea fan. So he's ready and raring to go for... Who do we play? Burnley? No, it's not easy. Oh, yeah, Burnley. That... Yeah. So they're hardly the Sean Dyke, rock and roll Sean Dyke. No, no, we... Not the bottom. It's not that easy, is it? Yeah, Burnley at home. Yeah, it'll smash it. Hell of a guess. I'll say that now and David Dachshund. Actually... Please tell me we have got a thing on him that says he can't play against his parent club. Please. You'd like to hope so, wouldn't you? Um... But yeah. Uh, Amir says, well done for pronouncing my name correctly. Uh, by the way, just to let you know that my name came comes from Morocco. Nice. But yeah. Extending our Moroccan fan base. <laughs> Morocco. Morocco was supposed to be hosting the uh, World Cup, wasn't it? No, In... I think that wouldn't be a great idea. 2030. It was supposed to joint host it with Spain and Portugal. Alison, by the way, is just in the away end. Yeah. In the Brazil. I like it. Love it. Surprised no one's like hoarding for pictures. We've probably already done that. Probably... There's only so many pictures you can get with Alison, isn't there? He might have like people there, like bodyguards. Bodyguards? He might. The whole row is just bodyguards. And Brazil are in behind, and Pickford will come and sweep it up. Oh, and Bellingham's in. Why is Maybe he... just pretending he looks like Alison. That would be so smart. Yeah. No, I'm not Alison, I just look like Alison. Because it's not the most unfathomable thing that someone looks like Alison. Do you know what people should do? What? Is it, like, so someone should, like, just sit there, get all your mates to come up to you at different times and take photos with you and get autographs, put it around you, then think you're famous. People would do that in Asian countries, don't they? Mm. I remember, because Arsenal did a pre-season tour there, someone went in a full it's Arsenal not, track yeah, suit like and... Because they, because they're people, but they're the type of people that don't know the players. They're just looking to get like photos and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nack says, "Please don't play par. We need to make sure we finish eleventh in the league." We do. Well, we can get Europe, so we do have something Gordon, to fight for. Super this high beats two, can beat third. I will also, after the amount that Nick Nack has bashed Chelsea this season, if Southampton do not play in the Premier League next season, Nick Nack, you will never hear the end of it. Just every stream. And if, and if Southampton do get up, we will stream Chelsea Southampton. <laughs> if it's on TV, it probably won't be. The Cork Southampton are in the playoff final. But I imagine you'd go, Nick Nack, to be fair, so you won't be here. And probably it would just watch it on TV rather than watch us. Well, I'd like to hope he joins us. It's only banter. Yeah, now he's backing down. Yeah, now he knows what Southampton slander's coming. Here we go. <laughs> anyway. I'm intrigued to see how that the is going to end. What, the championship? Mm. Yeah, maybe we should do a video on it. So. It feels weird that, so we're now, this year, I see big fight, top fight in the Premier League, big top fight in the championship, big top fight in the league. League One is kind of the only league where there isn't, mostly there's still well, Yeah, because PSG win every year, bloody hell, that's a... No, League One, the, the English Portsmouth won it by Canter. Yes. No, Lincoln City are well, like blind. I don't Lancers. know if the Arm National League is exactly for the most competitive league ever. Sheffield are already champions, were champions as of last Wednesday. Yeah. Like, they've been incredible. Yeah. They were harsh. They, done, they were hard done by by the fact that they were in a league with right. Wrexham and Notts County. They've made up for it. The fact that yeah. Notts County nearly, that they nearly beat Notts County last year. Been and the fact they've got joke. Paul Cook in charge is... I love it. Absolutely ridiculous. I love him. I don't love Paul Cook, but yeah, he's, he's nice. interesting. Anyway. That is Bowen warming up for England. See him at some point. Yeah. So this is a nil nil. I hate friendlies being nil nil. It's like I'm uh, playing a game in training and it being nil nil. Especially when you don't have no any goalkeepers. So it's the coach Jose Mourinho. What's a drill? <laughs> playing a game. Yeah, yeah, but it's nil nil. Yeah, some you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. Gallagher ball in. Bellingham heads it on wide. Goes wide. Disney. Nick Nack asks, are you guys still watching the game? Yes, we are, Nick Nack. Yeah. <laughs> we are. It's not much happening. Anyway. A good ball for Gallagher. Yeah, it weren't bad. Bellingham heading it across the box. Yeah, just great, no one able to meet it, really. The far post for England. Bellingham and now a bit of cramp for, for Jude Bellingham. 
bit worrying for a young player cramp 64 minutes into a game is it yeah considering the amount of football he's played this season i don't think it's that concerning fair enough it, man's, man, he hasn't had a, a week off in three years i know but we're six constantly playing for no footballer should be getting cramped six minutes into go e- no double change for england lewis dunk and joe gomez is gomez a debutant no. no he's not is he? he played like 10 years ago or like eight but years ago now he's back we are drawing nil nil in a friendly and we're bringing on two defenders yeah just to make sure we see out the nil nil it's so boring playing for a point tactical here's rodrigo Now, Vinicius Jr. Also, how is Lewis Dunk in the England team? Just deep that. Like, has he had a better season than Mark Gurhey? Probably. Is he a better player than Mark Gurhey? No. Is, is he, he better than Tamori? No. no. Is he having a better season than Tamori? Probably not. I haven't seen a lot of Tamori this season. I can't imagine having a worse season than Dunk, though. Not that Dunk's had a particularly bad season, but Brighton... I haven't exactly ripped up trees, and I've not I've not seen a lot of dunk praise for Lewis Dunk this year. Vinicius Junior. Now Rodrigo, Joe Gomez, and it's one back by England. We are. I still can't believe we are at home. We've played sixty five minutes of a friendly. It is nil nil, and we're going to bring on a centre half and a right back. I'd rather dunk than Maguire says Nick Nick. Yes, but that is like asking me. Um, which arm I want to snap off. And Jared Bowen is also no, a great on the ship change. So Bowen is on for Bellingham. I think Ancelotti's now got on the phone. So for Bellingham? I think it's Bellingham. Let's retire the team. Yeah, Jude Bellingham coming off. You know, I was cramping. So, makes yeah. sense. And then we will see. Duncan Gomez. <laughs> Duncan Gomez. I should start a band called that. Yeah. Chilwell coming off and Gomez will come on in his place and you'd imagine it would be the end of John Stones' as 90. Because I imagine Pep is more worried about Stones playing a full and Ace Maguire. Why are we breasting Maguire? He, you know, I do not need him. In fact, you know, I would rather he doesn't come back. Leave him at St. George's Park and just sit there for a bit. Anyway, 24 minutes to play. Yeah. Just sort of seen a half and half scarf, but it's a child, so we can't insult them. Stones, dunk. They should be educated better by their, their parents. Yes, they should. Go on, burn those more fire the last few games, says Nick Knack. Yeah, big opportunity here. Whether it's been better than Cole Palmer, I would, I'd argue no, but it, it, it's still a good put below. Anyway, Fonza has a free kick after that foul. And now they look to play out from England. Oh, Gallagher. Now Pickford. Dunk. Pickford. Lifts it into Conor Gallagher, flicks it towards Watkins. It's one back though by Beraldo. Now Bruno. Now across to Danilo. He just lumps a ball out to Wendell, and that has hit Bowen's hand, and that will be... Great save. <laughs> that will be uh, pulled up as a free kick. We get going in this one? I hope so. 22 minutes to play. Still changes to make, of course. Yeah. And we have just subbed on some weird defenders, so maybe we'll concede. Yeah. Can't wait to concede, and everyone goes, well, look what happens when you take off Maguire. As if that is a direct correlation or causation, sorry. Stones, Gallagher, Honza, Rice. Stones is now pushing up into his field as well, by the way. So. Well, I don't think it's actually do Honza doing that. I think he's probably just doing that off. Kind of and that's that's sort of what we wanted to see. Don't, don't just listen to that. Okay. Do whatever you want. Let him motivate you. Let the players on the pitch do the tactics. Rice. Now Foden, Dunk, Rice, 
Now it's Anthony Gordon. Stones. Just lifting it towards Konza. Towards Gallagher now. He goes down the box. And it's not given. Sass little finger wag from the referee. No, 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 Conor Gallagher. Another contentious one. Less so, but yeah, that's, that's a pen, probably. That's, look, Gallagher takes the ball there, that's a penalty. Ref just doesn't like awarding things, does he? Gary says, must be a fun experience for teammates to play against one another. Gordon versus Gimadaish, Bowen versus Paqueta. Yeah, says dive. Coming on, well, they're taking off Paqueta because he should have been sent off back to And they're bringing on ago. Andreas Pereira, I think that was. No. What a comeback for it. Yeah. And then behind him... He's still at Fulham. Yeah. I've seen a lot of him this season. And then behind him is Endrick. Wow. First taste of European football for Endrick. 17-year-old. And, uh, yeah. He don't look 17. He's massive, by the way. He's not massive. He looks really strong. Well, he is. He's, he's bloody good at football. I'm he's massive. Like, Round was earning £50 million on a 17 year old. He's not crap, is he? 17 or 70? 70. He's, he's bloody hell. Played with Pele. Wendell. How does he play with Pele? What? He was 70. Did cross over there? No. No, how much are they paying for him? 70 or 17? No, he's 17. They're paying 50. Oh, so Wait. not 70. Never mind. I said they're paying fifty million for a seventeen-year-old, I think, unless I said it wrong. Give a on a throw, and he's like he's just won the World Cup. Well, mate, you mean so much too. Hendrick with the popped collar, yeah, copying Harvey Elliott. Well, don't do that in an England shirt, though. <laughs> you have to do that, remember, in an England yeah. shirt. It's a shame they didn't put the um, the oh, Brazil flag in different colours on the back of the Brazil mm-hmm. shirt just to cause a bit less issue Jordan. for all the uh, flag shaggers. Watkins. Ball in. Just oh. the ball across the box. It's cleared away by Brazil. Nick, yeah, that says it must be a lot harder picking a Brazil team because you have players in all different uh, teams all over the planet. You do for England, we just don't pick any of them. A load of different people playing across Europe. Southgate only watches Premier League and Ajax. And, so and, and Kane. Yeah. But you already, you already knew about That's Kane. Right, I don't really. Just loves Ajax, that man. Just really just via play subscription. Here Sorry. is Rafinha. Oh, Rafinha just really well there to win the ball. Takes aim and it's blocked. And now England will come the other way. No, he says, I mean, that's true for most teams. England's odd one out and that few players go overseas. Most English players do play in the Premier League, though. No, he says, exactly. Yeah, but they have to. If not, they won't get seen. They ha- like they, you've yeah. got to have to play in the home. So, yeah. Because tomorrow he's gone missing. Andrew Gomez is never going to get a look in the first team. Madawake never really got a shout while at PSV. Good block in there from Dunk. Ponza. Let it go down the line, and that is a double change for England. That is Marcus Rashford and Kobe Mainu. So we've seen Endrick come on to make an appearance for England. So now we'll see Kobe Mainu do it for England. Anyway, this will please all the United fans. Yes. Certainly will. Ooh. Nice stuff from Jabra, isn't that? Well, Brazil depends on scouts. And then um, just got attacked by Beraldo. And then he kept going. Still. Kept going and then Bruno dealt with him. Conza. Now Watkins nods it towards Gallagher. Endrick. Tries a flick to Vinicius, who's thrown to the floor. Now Endrick again. Lovely little chip towards Vinicius. Unfortunately, that isn't kept in play. 
And now obviously a double change for England. So coming on for his debut. His senior international debut is Kobe Mainu on for Conor Gallagher. If it was Conor's score, the, I think the, the social media would erupt. United fan pages would lose their mind if Mainu scored. Yeah. So it's going to be Anthony Gordon off for Marcus Rashford. Oh, here we go. I mean, this is a really odd one. Cole Palmer, one of the standout players in the Premier League this season, probably going to win the young player of the season in the Premier League. And he wasn't even picked in the matchday squad. Marcus Rashford, someone who has been lacklustre, to say the very least, mm. for England, for Manchester United this season, now gets on for England. Stones. Dunk. And now Joe Gomez. Lewis Dunk. Back to Pickford. Stones. Next time about picking out a pass here, John Stones. Let's go back to Pickford. This one's a bit of movement. Dunk. Mainu drops in. Now back to Pickford. Stones. Rice. Stones. Pickford. Mainu. Nice football. Yeah, well played out of that. Now just carrying it forwards, just lays it to go Joe Gomez. Gomez has to go back to Dunk. And now we've just undone all our work. Pickford. Will we see a goal, says Nick Knack. 15 minutes to play. I will oh, say no. yes. I'm going to say no, this will be different. Good. Oh, no, I, I don't think I right. will. Nothing is showing me in this game we will get a goal. Positive thoughts. There will be a goal. Stones. Dunk. Mainu. Rice. Mainu. Rice. Mainu. Not rice. Here's Ezra Conza. Tries to find Watkins, but it's good defending from Baraldo. Now back with the goalkeeper. Krepsky, Foden applies the pressure, it goes back to Baraldo, he'll go down the line. Picked up on by Stones, pushing into midfield, now waiting for some sort of option. That's to tell Mainu to make that option. And now here's Kobe Mainu. Stones. Rice. Gomez. Rice. Back around the corner into Rashford. Foden back to Rashford. Now that will be a foul on, from Rashford. And a Brazil free kick. Very just getting brought down there. So it's been decent tonight, says Nick Nack. Yeah, he's a very good footballer. Doesn't say he's incredible. And now a double change for Brazil. That looks like Savio. That looks like he's not playing the line. I don't know if yeah. Why is he not starting? He's a brilliant player. He doesn't get over Bruno. He's much better than pa Paqueta, though. No, uh, not the same player. Not the same position. Don't care. Well, I think the manager does. Watch play the players that fit. So, Savio on the right hand side for Rafinha. And bringing Rush off for Douglas Lewis. Rush, Rush, we've got gloves on. It's spring, so it's chilly tonight, though, to be yeah, fair. It's a lot of cold. He's a professional footballer running around. Yeah. Take gloves off. Get on with it. Jay Barton's got a field day. Wait until he finds out he wears earrings. Uh, to be fair, I think Jay Barton's biggest issue would probably be the colour of his skin first. That's a good point. Good from Jay Back to now play. with Pickford. Now Dunk. God, because there goes the Jay Barton interview. Devastated. Can I just say, for international friendly, it's been shit. I don't know what you expected. How can you have a goalless, in, how can you have a goalless friendly? friendly? Just see if there's been any others. What was the point? It's England, isn't it? It's a point of friendly, you're not going to score a goal. 
Uh, Ireland Belgium was nil nil. Belgium missed a penalty and I no Ireland missed a penalty. Evan Ferguson and Ireland's goalkeeper was player of the match. Charmaine Kelleher. Denmark Switzerland is ten minutes from time and that's currently nil nil. Why? Tunisia Croatia is almost at the half and that's nil nil. Germany one up against France. Flo Vets. What wrong with that goal? goal. Are Germany outsiders for the Euros? No, Why not? They're shit. They're not. They, they have been shit. Mm. Vinicius oh is God. in. Vinicius is in. Vinicius. Hendrik goal. Will it stand? Yes, it will. England nil. Brazil won. Hendrik scores and he's going crazy for it. Frustrating for England. You think he's offside? He's Mars offside. Is there any VAR in? No. Check tonight. I don't know. It won't matter. Goal for Brazil. Goal for Endrick. First international goal for the 17-year-old. Let's have a look. He's not offside here. It don't matter he's offside here. That don't matter. Ball's not turned. Ball's played with him. So is on. Where is he when the shot's taken? He's onside. He's behind the ball. So that is a right, rightfully standing. And, and that is... A fucking shit goal. Of brilliant. The a terrible goal. Of it's shit from Dunk. The head is just not good enough. And then Endrick. I mean, good finish to be fair to the lad. It drops to him. He starts to put it away. Oh, I could score that. You would not have been in that position. So, for, yeah, I think we've got to do more with that save. And the other defenders have got to react a bit more. Sat here for 80 minutes. To you want a goal? 1 0. Winging for 20 minutes, you want a goal? There you go. This one. Well, I'm going to be happy about it. And it does stand. Hendrick celebrating with his manager. So there's three penalty calls just from Bomber. He does seem like a real talent, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Hendrick and Batway, Vicious Junior, Rodrigo, Bellingham. We might as well quit. Don't bother playing. And they want Harland, the greedy bastard. Like, Blondie O'Perry. Trent. They look at Trent. There's really, really something out in Trent. So that is their weak spot in their future team, isn't it? Uh, their fullbacks. In fact, the whole defence. Well, I think it might be all right because it'll be 10 luck, won't matter. It might be 10 5. Oh. If you can win the Champions League, I'll win 10 5. Well, they, they look like they'll get Alfonso Davies, so they sort of need a defensive right back, disgusting. not Trent. Again. They could do with someone like Benjamin Pavard. At Inter. But why would he leave? Yeah. He's having a great time at Inter. Can England find a. Massive goal to come back in this game. Here's Dunk. Will he give it to Hendrick again? Maybe. Now it's Bowen. Consa. We brought on two defenders. And one of them gave him a goal. Mm. Watkins. Tries to turn his man. Peralta does really well to win that back. Anyway, as I was saying, our Germany outsiders for the Euros. Mm, yeah, maybe. Home soil. Nagelsmann. Good potentially, times. Potentially so, potentially so. Does look offside, says Nick Nack. On the initial ball, says Gary. Missed offside call. Didn't look offside at all. Doesn't matter if he's, on, doesn't matter if he's onside on the initial ball. And also VAR. Yeah, Endrick wasn't onside, but it doesn't matter. The ball wasn't aimed towards him. Looked all one side to me. Yeah, that says we don't want to think we're better than we are, so losing isn't a huge deal. Um, yeah. No, I'm not bothered about losing. It's just it's just not been enjoyable. Would have been nice to win. I'm not sure what the juniors offside. He's not well. low. Look. Yeah, good point. I think if you use your depth perception, he's not. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, Channel Four aren't. England trying to win the ball heart of the pitch, but can't. Here's Vinicius. Is it a uh, coincidence that we bring on the star boy Minu and uh, Marcus Rashford and um, we can see? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, that is a coincidence. No, it's not. The cons has kept uh, Vinicius for fairly quiet today. Yeah, yeah, has done well. Apart from the bit where he ran for on goal. And... Yeah, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't a bit dunk to give away the ball in the area he was. Yeah. I'm going to first somehow kept going with that ball there. Brought that down accidentally. 
Who is grey, isn't it? Anyway. There also is. Now, Wendell. Shao Gomez. And now back with Danilo. Danilo manages to find Savio looking to make something happen. Was the Premier League next season, Savio? Do you think we'll see him flourish? Who is? City. Obviously. Oh, of course you will. It's Vinicius Junior. Looking to take on Esri Conza. Tries to pick out Savio overhead away by Joe Gomez. Savio manages to beat at Rashford in the air. Rashford did run to that one, though, which is a shot. Yeah. Yes. Are you replying to? I should not running. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, half time of that Germany game. But yeah, they do look good. Eight seconds to score. Mental. Don't invert set up by T uh, Tony Cruz. They could do that at the Euros. They might have a good chance. Yeah, it is a good Every time. Game. Yeah, I think it has been a good team for a while. And they've got the additions of Jamal Musiala, Florian Wirtz. They're two very strong players. I still think their defence is a little weak. I think, like, Miss Latat is playing today. New manager. Max Misch Mittelstad plays at left back. Jonathan Tarr, is that really a World Cup? Are you always winning defender? I don't know. Robert Andrich in midfield. What happened to Lucas Klosterman, by the way? No idea. Where is he? Might have retired. How old is he? Clusterman? I don't know. David Raum, though, will probably play left back. Yeah. Probably a better option. Uh, Benjamin Heinrichs. Pascal Gross is on the bench. Thomas Muller. So, yeah. Here's Joe Gomez. Not quite Thomas Muller, but we'll make them. That's the thing, though. Germany, while their side isn't perfect... The the one that won in twenty fourteen was hardly perfect. Yeah, good point. So, I just think home soil. They've always they're always going to be in the conversation with a coach yeah. as good as Nagelsmann and a squad that isn't bad. Maybe I'm overlooking. Of, I'm I'm over. I'm playing up the importance of a one 0 win a bit too or a one 0 lead a bit too much. But I think that's quite a positive sign. And Germany need a positive sign because it's all been fairly negative, actually, in their footballing. Their national football team. Since 2014, they haven't really shown up for an international no. tournament, have they? No. Four tournaments since then. Uh, they got in, in 2021, I think it's the only time they got into the group stages. Yeah. They got past the group stages. I think. Which is shocking. Yeah. Um, and, and then they got knocked out in the quarters by, by England. Yeah. Or 16s. That was 16, wasn't it? Yeah. She was on side, just to conf double confirm, yeah. by the way, the Vinicius assist for the Endrick goal. Here's Vinicius. But look how quick that was. Plays a ball out wide. out wide to Endrick. Yeah, because it's not an English official. Oh, that's brilliant skill from Endrick, but then Endrick comes and stands his ground. Definitely still some rawness there. Yeah. With Hendrick. But he's a brilliant player. Yeah. And if there's anyone that's going to coach him into a brilliant, even better player, it's Carlo Ancelotti. We're already using this up tonight. As, uh, uh, it's Gleison Bremer and uh, a man I uh, do not recognise, unfortunately. No idea why Bremer didn't start, by the way. Yeah. I want to say Pablo Meyer. Just from looking at the squad list. But yeah. Off comes Vinicius Junior. As well tonight. But yeah, yeah, you had a good game. Got the assist, of it course, for the Endrick goal. And yeah. Ooh. And then Wendell off for Bremer. Yeah, I'll see you guys following the Australian Grand Prix. Oh, I don't know. Yes. Mind me. 4 a.m. lights out in the morning, guys. And we're watching the feeder series as well tonight, so not going to sleep. 
And then the plan is uh, sleep sporadically and watch all the racing and then sleep until we're live tomorrow. So <laughs> basically just loads of sleep. Because we're obviously, if you're not aware, we're live on the Women's Football Chat tomorrow. Which is just from one of myself. I haven't done a stream page for that. Um, half past four, West Ham versus Chelsea. Should be a good one. Oh, yeah. Like 5am or something. 4am, Gary. Do not wake up at 5am. You'd have missed the first hour. But I'm, I'm fixed. I do love racing. And Max on pole, which helps. I do think the better races, though, will be the F2 and F3 race. So if you're looking for something else to watch, I, I think know, for I'm Gary, it's perfect race. times, isn't it? Gary must be loving it. Yeah. Marcus Rashford's. Darts inside, and that is stopping his tracks. Herrera. And that's four minutes of additional time. Savio. Hendrick. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Savio. Off we down. Hit the time off. I wouldn't have changed it. Just... I can't see out my left eye. Hang on. My God, what? My there you go. Like his eyes falling out. I think I'll just watch the highlights, says Nick Nack. All two minutes of them. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I think we couldn't really do an F1 watch at all. Oh, no, no. I spoke about it on the other channel, just because there's just not a lot to say. That's why those, like, I know the F, there was, um, I can't remember what they were called now. But for the fella studio set up an F1 thing and they did a, they did like half a season of it, mm. off the back of the of, of the sport really blowing up after the incredible fight between Verstappen and Hamilton. They started that, and it just didn't really work. The problem is, a lot of F one fans now think it's as good as twenty twenty one was. Not really, that's probably the best yeah. season ever. But one off, Bowen. Be like if you started watching the Prem this season. You think there's incredible title races every year. Rice. Now stones, dunk. Yeah, it says I'm a little underwhelmed by tonight's performance. I I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, we were a bit crap, but. It's not a huge issue. I mean, that's a terrible pass from Lewis Dunk. Can't ask to go and recover it. Stone just lifting one out wide to Rashford. Don't know why there's additional time in a friend, though. Neither. Dunk. It's been a bit of an underwhelming. Rice. Plays it out wide. Konza. Declan Rice. Ball towards the back post. And Rashford cannot meet it with the header. Minute and a half to go. Bit of a just a dry game, isn't it? Dry game, dry. Friend. It's a friendly. At the end of the day, it's a friendly. You know. Yeah, it's been nice though. Nice to stream it. Thanks everyone that's tuned in today. It's been a really, really good stream. Sounds of numbers. Yeah. Which a uh, big positive, considering recent um, yeah. recent months. Rice. Out wide to Rashford. Ball into the box and it's not met well by England. Falls to Declan Rice and it's blocked away. That's good from Shao Gomez to stop that going out for a corner. What's he doing? It's Knocking a friendly, the ball mate. friendly. Conza. Rice. Mainu. Rice. Foden. Conza. Mainu. Hit it, Stones. Gives it to Rashford. You know we're not going to score now. <laughs> Dunk. And uh, now Joe Gomez puts into the box. Mainu. Foden. Ball in behind, and that will be a corner. Probably the last touch of the game yeah. here from this corner. Can we make it count? 
Go on, make it one one. Get something. Get something to cheer about. Sing "Sweet Caroline" long and certain. Like, go on. Royce's corner. Speak it, God. Royce's corner. Last seconds of the game for England. Can we do it? Here we go. Declan Royce balling in a minute. And up. Eight times a day. Go on. Ball in. Oh, and away right, our right, first right. man. Gomez. Minu. Minu. Now they'll break. Brazil will break. Oh, Savio yeah. has to Andres Pereira. One side goes to Andres Pereira. Ball across. Hendrick for Brazil. Saved. Two nonchalant. Like Douglas Lewis and that will be it. England nil, Brazil one, decisive goal from the 17-year-old Hendrik. Raises arms aloft. Incredible performance from him off the bench. As for England, a little bit lacklustre this evening. Not the ideal way we would have wanted to begin this international break as we build up for Euro 2024. We'll be back on Tuesday night for the Belgium game. That's everything from us this evening. Uh, in terms of videos between now and then, there is nothing. So join us Tuesday and, uh, well, check out the short coming out on Monday, all that sort of stuff. Uh, in the meantime, though, thank you guys very, very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.